except to... Gubba Gabba. The Ron and Fez show. Another sad day in New York City, Fez. We lost Dee Dee Ramone now. Another Ramone brother gone. Yeah. That's two down. In a very short time. Yeah, just lost Joey last year. Dee Dee Ramone found dead on his couch by his wife in his home in Hollywood. Age 50. Dee Dee. We accept you. Gubba Gabba. The Ron and Fez show. Another sad day in New York City, Fez. We lost Dee Dee Ramone now. Another Ramone brother gone. Yeah. That's two down. In a very short time. Yeah, just lost Joey last year. Dee Dee Ramone found dead on his couch by his wife in his home in Hollywood. Age 50. Dee Dee. Earl, you just saw him not too long ago over at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. They just got in. Well, how long ago was that? Like, uh, um, in like March? two, just three months, months ago? Yeah, yeah like 11, 12 weeks ago? A couple of months ago. Did you say anything, Earl? Did you do anything weird? Earl, you didn't do anything bad, did you? No. All right. So, they're saying right now looks like accidental drug overdose. They found a single syringe on the kitchen counter. That's one. <laughs> I the, consider that accidental. And the coroner's office did not say what drug was suspected in Dee Dee Ramone's death. So how many Ramones are left now, Earl? I think uh, four. I thought it was three with the oh, replacement. Sorry. The original. The original, I think, is two left. There's been like five or six of them. Hey, Andrew, Andrew, you're on a fuzz. Hey, Andrew, go ahead, Hi, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, let me let me be the first to start the rumor that there's a Ramones curse, either that or a rock curse, because a lot of rock stars are dying this year. All right, this on the uh, instant feedback. Dee Dee was great at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame speech. He thanked himself. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Way to go, Dee Dee. <laughs> As he said. <laughs> All right, so there's actually more dead Ramones than there are dead Rolling Stones. That's odd. That's very weird. How we got one dead stone? Yeah. Brian Jones. Right. Here's uh, Bill. Bill, you're on Ron and Fez. How are you, buddy? Hey, Bill. Hey, I'd like to start the rumor that these guys are just getting old. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not like he died of old age, though. He is 50. That's all. But that's the way to go out. Yeah. He's, he's a punker. Yeah. All right, thanks. And Joey was 49. The Ramon brothers weren't ancient. 877-692-1027. You know, uh, Billy was uh, giving us a list of uh, dead rock stars, what bands. Uh -huh. Half these people aren't even dead. <laughs> he gives me a list. I said, give me the dead rock star out of band so we can see what band has the most dead rock stars in it. Uh, right off the bat, I see Steve Perry. He has listed. <laughs> <laughs> he just has new hips. <laughs> Sweaty News Update. Billy comes running in with a Sweaty News Update. Sweaty News Update. And we get we get misinformation. <laughs> Soaking wet. And since uh, we said, uh, Fez and I were just talking, hey, when this fight happens between Al and uh, Rory, we're going to lose a producer. Billy, quite seriously, was just saying to us, I'm willing to come in earlier and do a lot of the uh, administrative stuff. Learn it. I want to come in early and learn that. And I'm like, you've been here for a year. And all you don't know how the show works yet. All you've got is the party mix down and, of course, the sweaty news update. Now I just got handed a sweaty news update. What's the latest? 
Uh, Ronnie. Soaking wet. Would you like to know all the Ramones' real names? No. Because that's what I just got handed to me. To me, they're just the Ramones. I don't need to know real names. On a dripping wet <laughs> piece of paper. On you a know, sweaty news update. I don't get a big thrill knowing that Hulk Hogan is Terry Bollea. That doesn't mean a real lot to me. Right. Oh, here comes another one. Sweaty news update. Sweaty news. Why did D.D. Ramon leave the band? Numerous reasons have been cited for D.D.'s departure. Oh, jeez. Get it away. Throw it out. I swear, here's the thing of Dead Rock Stars. He has, uh, I'm not I'm not kidding about this. He thinks I just mean guys that left bands. Because mm. he has Sid Barrett <laughs> and Roger Waters on here. <laughs> Bill Berry, who's not dead. You haven't given me one dead person. Bill Berry! All right. And let me ask you this on a Sweaty News update. The man comes in here and hands us all kinds of worthless pieces of paper. How do you make paper stink? How do you do that? How sweat. sweaty are these news updates that the paper stinks? By the way, Billy had his CAT scan. That's why he couldn't work hard. Right. Uh, nothing's wrong with him. They found absolutely nothing. When they scanned his brain, they found nothing. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. What's happening? Yeah. But I... Listen, uh, I just... This is going to sound terrible, and all the listeners are going to hate me and whatever, but... I already hate you, and you haven't... Yeah, it's okay. I hate you too. When, uh, when I hear that famous guys die of uh, drug overdose, mm -hmm. I'm actually kind of happy. And the reason being is because it takes the famous people to overdose and die to get to the younger people not to touch the drugs in the first place. Right. No kids have done drugs since Jimi Hendrix died. You've come up with a good point there. Really, no, but, it's really but what helpful. I'm saying, no, what I'm saying, listen, is because if the guy next door dies of a, uh, of a drug overdose, nobody hears about it. Mm -hmm. But you get these famous people, these icons, who still stick needles in their arms and they die. And you know what? It's unfortunate. I'm sad that he's gone, but at least sending a message to the younger kids, stay the hell off the of drugs. So this way he didn't die in vain? No way vain? in hell did he... Being a little junk. Oh, I would. Kind of I'm with you. Turn of a phrase but there. No way did he die in vain, because it took a famous person to get the message across that, oh, you know what, maybe I shouldn't touch this garbage. Mm -hmm. Because if just the guy next door stuck a needle in his arm and they didn't find him for two weeks because his rotten body smelled, it won't hit the papers and it won't hit Ron and Fez. All and right. nobody will hear that. Thank you very much. Uh, Take care. Really uh, cleared things up for all of us. Later. Well, I think we're all taking a big second look at the heroin trade. It's not as uh, just fun as we thought, Fuzz. No, no. The heroin chic isn't as glamorous no. as you would hope it would be. No. He's uh, Tom, you're on running Fuzz. Hello, hey, Tom. Guys. Jeez, that guy drove me nuts. They, if they don't want kids to do drugs, why don't they just admit that it's fun? It's fun, fun, fun. Until the one day it isn't fun. Right. Right up to the end. It's, Jeez. it's fun right up to the last minute. Just explain to the kids that a lot of people can't handle drugs. All right. This on the uh, instant feedback. Uh, was Razor one of the original Ramones? Razor Ramon? No, he wasn't. He was part of the original Outsiders and NWO, though. Billy just handed me a note that Razor Ramon's real name is Scott Hall. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sweaty News Update. Sweaty News Update. Sweaty News Update. He runs in here sweating. I can't wait till he does the administrative duties that he's going to be picking up. I sat there in amazement. He's pitching himself to me and Ronnie. He's got sweat stains that go from the small of his back that wrap around his pits. And he's exp and I'm thinking, this is the man who will have meetings with Ken Stevens right. for us. And he's uh, holding the bag. No kidding. A party mix. Right. He's holding a bag of party mix and a highlighter saying, Whip, I got all my tools for the job. Right. And am I exaggerating? No, you're telling the exact truth. And at this point, he decides to pitch himself. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll just try to learn what the other guys do. And then, then he actually qualifies it and says, And then I'm willing to come in early two days a week to help out. Sure. Two days a week. <laughs> He'll come in early. I had no idea what he said. I was tuning him out. <laughs> hey, Tom. Tom, you're on Run Fez. Hey, Tom. Hey, boys. What's up? Hey, buddy. Four, buddy. Four, eight, three, two. All right, buddy. Cool. Yeah. How, how horrible is it that this guy dies with all his talent, yet Billy could fall down a flight of stairs with a heroin needle stuck in his arm, and he gets to live? 
How horrible is this? I don't understand it. God is a mysterious, vengeful God. That's I, all I can. All I know. I can only think that God takes his favorites. And yes, God enjoys <laughs> Didi Ramon yeah. more than Billy Staples. I'm going to tell the other guys, it looks like he's trying to put the band back together. Be very careful. <laughs> very, very nervous. If God needs someone to open or MC, he'll get Billy Staples. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, Anthony, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Anthony. What's up, Ron Fez? 13503. Yeah, buddy. Hoo-ha! What's going on? Thank you. I was wondering if Billy, if he gets this... Uh, Administrative job. If he'd be doing any of these, of uh, um, uh, excuse me, any administrative duties on check. on his paycheck. Oh, so that's well, the administrative be, be administrative duties. So I was wondering great. if he might, you know, yeah, we're do with you, duties. duties. Yeah, I got it. All right, we're thank so you. with you. We're right there. We're running alongside you. I know now that joking with fecal matter is never justified. That's the latest sweaty news update. <laughs> And that's the man who is ready at a moment's notice to fill in for either Al Dukes or Rory Hamptons, whoever loses the loser leave the show match. I know it is not a joke match. It's not going to be a draw. We get to get rid of somebody. They both agreed to it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Heckler wants to talk about DD. Hey, Heckler, you're on a fez. Hey, Heck. Hey, buddy. It's hey, a bud sad day in New York. Another New York rock legend is gone. Yeah. And believe it or not, there's only two original Ramones, uh, Ramones still alive. There's Tommy, the original drummer, who was replaced by Marky later on, and there's Johnny. You're going to figure that there are more original Four Seasons than there are Ramones. It doesn't make sense to you. Yeah, well, i got to tell you about uh, Didi. I got, you know, the guy had his struggle with the stuff. And, yeah. you know, I love the compassion of some of the callers, you know. Sure. If you live in a glass house, you shouldn't throw stones. and. All I can say is, you know, I grew up with the Ramones. I used to see them, I would say, maybe a hundred times back in the in the glory days. And I used to talk to Dee Dee on occasion. A very humorous, funny, witty guy, but very, very intense. And his playing style was the same way. We're not talking Stanley Clark. We're not talking John Entwistle. We're talking, you know, three-chord fun music, but it was powerful, it was tight, and it was intense. And... The, 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 like we talked about when Joey passed away, this group was like part of the whole New York scene, and they they defined the generation. And it sounds like a cliche, but it was so true. And back then, we talked about once how they used to have sticks and Ario Speedwagon, and a guy like Dee Dee could come out, play three chords, and you know what? It sounded damn good. And even though the guy struggled near the end of his life, and you know had tried to break away, I mean the Ramones all hated each other near the end. They were all fighting each other anyway. They're a New York institution, and I, I thank you for playing Pinhead in the beginning. It was a great tribute. I think it should be the new theme song for you guys, but yeah. that's up to you. But anyway, I just wanted to that, you know, this guy is definitely a New York legend, and uh, he'll definitely be missed. All right, thanks, Heck. Let's throw this one out here for Dee Dee. Dee Dee Ramone, dead at age 50. Here's Helena Joy. She wanted to talk to us. Helena, you're on a fez. Hi, boys. Hey. Once again, I'm so confused. Um, I picked up the Daily News today, and I'm reading page 39, just like right before the show. And according to the Daily News, Dee Dee Ramone um, has been a rapper and a ghost writer since leaving the Ramones. Yeah. And now he's trying his hand as a painter. His arts will be showing in an art show in New, uh, in New Jersey's Patterson Museum. Are we sure this guy is officially dead? Yeah. It happened, I guess they found him today, so you, what you were reading was probably yesterday's news. Right. Okay, because that's pretty eerie. And it's, it's under side dishes next to Gene Simmons' uh, launching of his new Kiss fragrance. Like, it's nothing. No one wants to rock anymore. Like, it's nothing. Everything else. Well, like, yeah. No, 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 no. They, they didn't know that he was dead by then. Yeah, time. that's not an the obituary paper. you're reading. Yeah. That's yeah. Not. You need a sweaty news update. Yeah, yeah what's going sweaty on here? Sweaty news update. I to the show and I went, huh? Sweaty news update. All right, thanks. There it is. He is uh, dead. Dee right. Ramon, dead. 50 years old. And what, Dee Dee King? Was that his rap name? Well, you're thinking of B.B. King. He's ah. a great place down in <laughs> Times Square. Love it. <laughs> Lucille. <laughs> the mashed potatoes are great. 877-692-1027. Here's uh, James. James, you're on a fez. Hey, James. What's up, guys? Yeah. All I got to say is, are you trying to tell me that that guy and that sound defined an era? Uh, the Ramones? Yeah, that's yes, all. Yes, they definitely did. What era was that? It was the punk rock era, which has spun off, oh, 
hundreds and hundreds of bands. Dear God, they need a little Al Green in their lives. <laughs> Well, you know what? They were actually out at the same time as Al Green. But all, not all music is going to sound the same. We're not saying this was the best music of all time. But most of the people who saw the Ramones went out and started a band right afterwards. Here is uh, Scott. Scott, you're on Rana Fez. Hello, Scott. Yeah, I heard uh, Billy Staples, when he gets his new job, his first meeting with Ken Stevens is going to be about getting more Dickie Goodman bits on the air. <laughs> All right. That's the latest. Sweaty News Update. Sweaty News Update. In uh, case you're wondering, a sweaty news update is when a large man named Billy Staples comes bounding into the studio with no regard for what's going on in the air, I sweating up a storm and tries to hand us old news. Take a mic. I want you to tell the truth. Did you absolutely mean it when you thought that you could replace either Al? And I want you to be totally honest, okay? Not okay. Be, not being funny, Billy, or I knocked myself out, Billy, or I'm going back into rehab, Billy. But just be yourself. And tell us the truth. Were you serious when you pitched yourself as taking over some of the administrative duties and becoming a real producer of the show? I was 100% uh, honest. Because there were some things that, you know, Al sits behind me. I don't know. And Rory sits on the other side of me. So I don't know what goes on, what they're doing. They're doing work. <laughs> So, I mean, if one of them, you know, I come in early, want to show me what exactly they're doing, you know, these things. Uh, I you get... had a year to show any interest in radio. Oh, Why have... did you wait until you found out one of them was going to be carried out of here and no longer part of the show? Well, I'm picking my spots. I mean, yes, I... it would have been great if you would have learned some skills and then picked your spots. See, if you had been learning all along and now we lose one of these guys, you would be that guy that, yeah, could pick up some slack. Now you're just another liability. Now you're just now it's who's going to watch the big retard baby <laughs> when a Rory or Al is in here. But balls. Hey, but watch balls. your language, Mister. Here's uh, Drew. Drew, you're on Ronnie Fest. How are you? Hey, Drew. Hey guys, how you yeah. doing? Uh, do you remember uh, the Flintstones episode that had the band that was like a spinoff of the Ramones? Are you, you're not talking about the Way Outs. The Way Outs. Yeah. That was actually pre-Ramones. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Yeah. You think the, the Ramones got their identity from the Flintstones? Or what? I'll have to go back and look at the Way Outs. <laughs> way Outs. That's where the fun is. Way Out. Because that's where the sun is. It's Way, way out. out. And remember with the Way Outs when they would sing? They would actually, uh, their whole bodies would come apart because they, they had those like rings all around them. Yeah, they were like stacked. <laughs> So their bodies would actually separate like poker chips. Here's, uh, that was a great band, though. And trust me, I don't like bug music. I'll actually leave if I hear bug music. Bug music! Mike, Mike, you're on Fez. Hey, Mike. Hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah. I was wondering if that girl's correct that his artwork's on sale. Do you think they got the markers out, marking the prices up? I know I need one. Now I feel like I need one more than ever. I need a D.D. Ramon painting. Thank you. And to your fabulous collection. So far, I have a uh, Keith Richards, who, according uh, to the instant feedback, died nine years ago and no one told. Oh, no. And then um, another instant feedback here says, uh, Didi, not that sedated. Oh. 877-692-1027. Here is um, Rob. Rob, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Rob. Hey, buddies. Yeah, buddy. Hey, I was the guy that won the uh, band stuff the other night. It's great. Thanks, man. Oh, cool. I'm glad. Hey, two things real quick. One, uh, years and years ago, got to be 10, 12 years ago, I was at some nightclub somewhere, and I don't know why they gave this out, but they gave out Dee Dee Ramone's solo record. It was on, like, a cassette. It was called Dee Dee King, like you said. Yeah, it was like when he was doing rap or something? No, this was like rockabilly and, like, Ramone's type stuff. And I wish I still had it, but I lost it years ago. It's a really obscure thing I've never seen anywhere else. And uh, I, I was just reminded of it when I heard, you know, the news today. All right, thanks a lot. Oh, one more thing. Yeah. I want to tell Billy Staples I got my own sweaty news update. Oh, well, hold on. Let me get that. Yeah. Sweaty news update. There you go. I want to tell him that uh, Keith Moon is dead, and his real name is Keith Moon. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much. Thank, oh, you. thank you for that sweaty news update. I right, Bill from Yorktown said the way outs was the Jetsons, not the Flintstones. My friend, you couldn't be any more wrong. You are completely wrong on that one. 
because that was when they did the whole thing with the Bedrock radio station that the city had been invaded by sure. the way outs. Now, was that your favorite band? On the Flintstones? Yeah. Mine was uh, that whole rock roll uh, deal where uh, Bedrock, <laughs> Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Was his name Rock Roll? I think it was Rock Roll. Uh, and what kind of egg did he eat? A pickled dodo bird egg? <laughs> Is that right? A pickled dodo bird egg. And then he couldn't, he couldn't sing after that. Sure. He was allergic. And he had to put his wig on Fred. I like Hokey Carmichael. I like that Swedish band that was living in their garage. Yeah, who was the Swedish <laughs> band that sang Ya Ya Vilma? <laughs> ya Ya My Vilma. The Schmanky Brothers or something. I don't know. There was a lot of good music on the original Flintstones. And Marg Rock? And Marg Rock was great. Yeah. I don't know if I really liked uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam doing uh, Let the Sun Shine In, but they were gigantic hits. <laughs> Wherever they went, they sold out for that one little tune. <laughs> Playing on a toy guitar and drum. Here's uh, Rob. Rob, you're on Ron and Faz. Buddy. Hey, Rob. What can we do for you? Yeah, also a lot of pro wrestlers died this year, too. Right? I mean, we just lost Davey Boy. Uh, and uh, we lost uh, one of the Dudley boys. We lost... Uh, Big Dick Dudley. Big Dick. We lost uh, Luthes. Right. Uh, there was a few others, I think. We, oh, we lost the chief. No. Yeah, we lost Chief Joseph this year, too. Chief oh. Joseph? I thought you meant Chief J. Yeah. I no, we, we lost, uh, there was a lot of uh, pro wrestlers dead this year. All right, well, uh, all our condolences out to... <laughs> I don't know what to to everyone? I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't... Here's uh, Mark. Oh, good. Well, Flintstone Rock. But why did this get so big? This seemed like an hour-long episode, this one. Sing it, kids. You know what was uh, one of my other favorite songs on there was that whole... If he's a, a, a chubby hubby, then he's a happy pappy. Now, what was the thing that they were selling? It was like Rock and Spiel or something like that? Oh, yeah, Rock and Spiel. If With, he's a chubby hubby, then right. he's a happy pappy. I also like the Soft Soap Barbershop <laughs> Quartet. With I tried that. I think that we think we got on nine. Oh, All right, go ahead. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Make your hobby happy. There you go. Keep your hobby happy when he's a little chubby. He's a happy peppy with rock and spiel. <laughs> One more time, Wilma. Make your hobby happy. Keep your hobby happy. Remember at the end she was just singing it to Fred? He's a happy peppy. Because he was getting hungry while she was out selling the stuff. All right. Now I think my favorite is when Fred and Barney bought the drive through diner. And it was, here we come on the run with, with a, a burger, burger on the bun. bun. That was a good one. And those, those girls were trying to get waitress jobs. Here's uh, Mark. Mark, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Mark. Hey, what's up there, Ron and Fez? Big ass 6362. All right, buddy. Cool. Hey, I, I definitely loved Hot, Flip, Hot Lips Flintstone when he was like a beatnik and he was like, yeah, 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 cool, daddy. Yeah, cool, cool daddy. That was a damn good one. All right, that was a damn good one. Hey, hold on. Here he is, you cat. You're singing idle. High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Screw you not down to the pound. Oh, yeah. Let's go better, buddy. Better, 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 Go, 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 go. <laughs> listen to him, right? Listen to him, roll. Listen Obviously, not the same people doing the characters' voices. Oh, no, it is. It's well, definitely them. Nail them. Listen, listen to the rocket. <laughs> Listen to the rockin' bird, he's a bird. The rockin' bird is swinging all day long. Hey, Tom, Tom, you're on a fest. Hey, Tom. Hey, guys, what's going on? Yeah. How about when they bought the diner and they had the Here You Come on the run with the burger on the oh, side? Oh, that was a damn great song. On the, side. the diner song. Yeah. Well, hold go. on. See if okay. we got it. Take yeah. it easy. All right, sit. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's 
Charlie and Irving, and they got their raffle tickets with them. Come in, fellas. They always have that little uh, sound you in the back. Come on a run with the burger on a bun, and his elbow cold on the side. Oh, your taste, we will tickle with the cold dill pickle, and all of our potatoes are fresh fried, fried, fried. Our burgers can't be beat, cause we fried our own meat. Very nice. Now, we don't have the way out song on there, because we could start the big radio prank, Fezzy, <laughs> where we keep announcing, watch out for the way outs. The way outs are coming, and then people won't know it's a new band. They'll actually think it's aliens and freak out. The way outs have consented to sing. They have? And a one, and a two. There's a place where I can go, and that's where I want to be. I'm saying goodbye to you, good people. I remember it actually much better at the time. <laughs> the way it's had a kind of a surf sound going there. Here's uh, Steve. Steve, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Steve. Steve. All right, this on the instant feedback, Fezzy. Do we have the happy anniversary song with the dancing girls? That one? Yeah, we can cue that one up. Let's say we're having trouble with the machine now. Sure we are. As we're trying to play a big rock CD. It's actually a big boulder. <laughs> There's a bird that we keep putting down as a needle, and it's not working. Hold on, Fezzy, look up. Sweaty news update. What do you have there, Billy? Well, I have an update on the way outs. Really? Wouldn't you say it? The way outs are an English rock group that is mistaken for aliens. Although a radio prank, yeah. I was talking mm -hmm. about that. Right. Yeah. Sweaty news. It's dripping, it's sweaty, and it's uh, late. Always late. And that is just not queuing up, bro. All right, let's uh, try uh, Mike. Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, buddy. What about the, uh, the Bedrock Twitch? Bedrock Twitch we were talking about earlier. Do we have that one, Fez? Yeah, that one. That's on a there. damn good song. To me, this is the all-time best. Well, I aim to try, and here's the song I'm going to sing to your show. It's one I just recorded. Jeans, tell your mom not to wait. You ain't getting home till late. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna twitch. There's a town I know where the hipsters go called Bedrock. Twitch, twitch. When you get an itch, then you do the twitch in Bedrock. Twitch, twitch. Cause the twitch is fine. Have yourself a time in Bedrock. Twitch, twitch. Around That's Memphis sound now. <laughs> bedrock. Twitch, twitch. And Rock is gonna roll with all his might in Bedrock. Twitch, twitch. It's a swing in town, so I'll see you down in Bedrock. Twitch, twitch. Yeah, yeah. David, David, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, hey David. Yeah. Of course, then there was the episode where Barney's singing career hit a snag because he could only sing in the shower. Right. And he had to end up performing in the shower. Well, didn't, uh, at one point, wasn't there like a dinosaur as part of that band somehow? Or one of the <laughs> one of the other barbershop things was all like all dinosaurs? <laughs> right. I, that was like when he did the soft soap thing, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the soft soap contest. All right, Keith. Keith, hey. you remember the soft soap one? I know it by heart, guys. Yeah. First big ass one one nine eight zero. All right, buddy. Hooah. All right, here we go. Yeah. Soft soap is the soap for you. Soft soap, soft soap. Gentle for babies and brontosaurus too. It prevents embarrassment. Soft soap in your bathtub. Buy a great big hunk. 
Better buy some soft soap quick before they call you skunk. Ding, soft soap. Ding, soft soap. Ding, soft soap. Ding, buy soft soap. Soft soap. Because not a dum dum dum. Soft soap is the soap for you. Soft soap, soft soap. Gentle for babies and brontosaurus too. It prevents embarrassment. Soft soap in your bathtub. Use a great big hunk. Better buy some soft soap quick before they call you skunk. Soft soap. <laughs> Did none of us have parents? Is there any reason at all that every person in America knows these songs? <laughs> nope, we just had the Flintstones on our TV set. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. This is the Round Fest Show. 1027 WNEW, New York. Ron and Fez. 1027 W A W. We're out of Fez. 877 692 Ronnie R. Kelly, of course, now facing 15 years in prison. I was arrested yesterday, right? Arrested yesterday, indicted by a grand jury, 21 counts of child pornography. Now, I didn't know that they could be able to arrest him since the girl and her parents never kind of came forward. Right, they said in Chicago that the FBI had to use forensic experts to determine the identity of the girl. I don't know how that works. I don't know. I mean, the tape was three years ago. They said the tape shows that the couple were inside R. Kelly's Chicago home. Now, they said that other relatives also identified the girl because her and her parents didn't want to cooperate. So, what's the case? Just the fact that it's on tape? I think it's the fact that he made a video, sex acts, with a minor. Right. It's pornography charges, not assault charges, not rape charges. All right, so here's R. Kelly. He's got this big career singing and producing, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Stupid move, A, being with a minor. Stupid move, taping this. Sure. And an even stupider move, making sure somehow it gets out there. I mean, it must be not the only tape. Or B, he just doesn't care either way. He just thought he was above it all. This thing was everywhere, all over the Internet. Plus, whoever else had actual video copies of it. And it's uh, sex acts with a 14-year-old, uh, during which she calls him daddy. Oh, that's nice. She that calls part's him daddy. Nice. That the... part's nice because such a fatherly role for her. Right, throughout the video. And there's um, other things included on the video. The, uh, the orals there. Uh, whiz games, Ronnie. The yellow discipline is involved. Well, at that age, Fezzi, you still... Having trouble holding it, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess don't know it, was, if it was ever her. Well, R. Kelly's never had a really strong bladder himself. So, now, so he gave her a shower. Right. So everything's in on this. T- you get it all with this video. Yeah. Daddy says there's a storm front coming in, honey. <laughs> At one point, she's holding an umbrella. That's why they had trouble identifying her. Why would he tape this? What was he thinking? I think he's trying to put out kids' videos. I think that, uh, what was his... Uh... There's a big market there, Fezzi. There's a big uh, market for children's videos. I believe I can fly. Ah, there he is. You know, he hits so well with Space Jam, the kids' movie. Sure. He wants to put out kids' videos with kids in them. It's Space Jam in a, in a miner's mouth. <laughs> Space Jam in her mouth. He's uh, shooting videos. For kids, Sabrina the Teenage Freak. Available now from R. Kelly, My Little Pony. <laughs> Only on R. Kelly. R. Records and tapes. For children. Yeah, he's got one out, Jimmy Neutron, Boy Gyno. I just on the answer feedback. Statutory rape, sex with a minor is illegal whether the charges are pressed or not. It's also endangerment. 
So they don't even need the 14-year-old girl. No. To go after R. Kelly. I just hope this doesn't stop his videos and tapes from coming out. I want to see Johnny Quest for 14-year-old girls. That's cute. Johnny Quest. <laughs> little girls. From R. Kelly videos. It's the Power Muff Girls from R. Kelly videos. <laughs> Starring R. Kelly as Professor X. We'll also be putting out Coos Clues for you youngsters. Coos Clues? We had to find a way to play that in here. I know there's a video out called Scooby Don't. Don't! Scooby Don't! And of course, Throb the Builder. Where they're at a construction site. It's just R. Kelly and some of the young ladies at a construction site. Hey, Mike, Mike, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Mike. Hey, buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. Hey, you know what? I don't understand this. I saw the news yesterday, and there were people on there admitting that they saw the tape. If it's child pornography, isn't that uh, incriminating? I, yes, it definitely is, but only after the charges came up. This uh, happened before. Who was the, the girl who was a porn star, and then they took her out for dinner, and then she said, oh, yeah, and I'm 17 today. Oh, yeah, Tracy Lord. Tracy Lords. So those uh, tapes weren't uh, illegal until after it became aware. But if you oh. have one now, I'd get rid of it. Yeah, once you have the knowledge, then you're in trouble. Right. Once that's officially said. See, knowledge is not always good for you. <laughs> knowledge isn't power. It's bad. Hey, Ben, Ben, you're on Ronan Fez. Hey, Ben. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah. I heard that R. Kelly's next movie is going to be Very Little Boys in the Hood. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> All right, this uh, from RJ on the answer feedback. R. Kelly is putting out uh, Telly Rubbies. And that actually should be Kelly Rubbies. <laughs> Kelly Rubbies. <laughs> Kelly Tubbies. <laughs> when, um... <laughs> Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. I'm waiting for R. Kelly's Vaggie Tales. That should be enlightening. But right, Matt says he's doing little girls gone wild tapes, all from R. Kelly. <laughs> little girls gone wild. She may be twelve. Here is uh, Mike. Mike, you're on the Ron of Show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Mike. What you got, buddy? Uh, Dr. Do Little Girl. <laughs> Dr. Do Little Girls. So, <laughs> thank heaven for little thank girls. You. He's talking to some young beef. The Dr. Do Little. <laughs> Here's, uh, take your thumb off that, Al. Thank you. Here's, uh, Polly. Polly, you're around a fez. Polly. Hey, what's up, Bryce? Hey, buddy. But I? But I? Sesame 42nd Street. <laughs> <laughs> See ya! See ya! Nice work, Polly. I know he's putting out a video and some uh, toys and collectible cards for He Poked Me Mom. He Poked Me Mom. <laughs> he Poked Me Mom. Here's David. David, you're around in Fez. Hey, David. How you doing, guys? Just yeah. uh, another variation on the Teletubby theme. Kelly Chubbies. Well, see, that's uh, kind of sad. <laughs> what about KY Jelly Tubbies? Nice. Thank you, David. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Thank you for participating. 877-692-1027 is the toll-free phone number. Uh, here's JoJo writes in on the instant feedback. Not so Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> All for the new R. Kelly video collection for kids. Here, here is uh, Tom. Tom, you're on a fez. Hey, Tom. What's up, fellas? But eh? Uh, his new movie's going to be Rainbow's Tight No More. Rambo tight, no more. No more. Now, this R. Kelly, he has been sued by four women for his alleged sexcapades, as they call them, Ronnie. Including three who claim he had sex with them while they were underage. He's never getting out again. <laughs> and then, of course, we uh, know we learned that he uh, had married Aaliyah when she was 15 years old. Now, nobody writes in on the instant feedback uh, that he saw... Honey, I Spunked the Kid, which is available now on our <laughs> Kelly Tapes. Here's uh, Mike. Mike, you're on Run of Fez. What's hey, up? Mike, what you got, buddy? Yeah. The one is uh, Lord of the Underage Rings. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Underage. <laughs> Lord of the prostitution rings. Child <laughs> porn rings. Here's uh, Joe. Joe, you're on Run of Fez. Joe. Buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, hey, R. Kelly's putting out a new line of the Child's Play movies. Yeah? What's that? Yeah. Child's, little Chucky. Little oh, Chucky, okay. Yeah, Child's <laughs> Play. I got gotcha. you. All right, it's Chucky with an F. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Here is... Uh, uh, F.U. Corksucker says yes? that R. Kelly's coming out with a line of cartoons called Looney Poons, which should be fun for the kids. <laughs> Thank you, F.U. 877-692-1027. Here's Louie. Louie, you're on Run and Fez. Louie. Louie. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, Louie. R. Kelly's 15 and a half years. 15 and a half years. Uh, I don't know what that one is. That one. Here's Rob. Rob, you're on on first. Rob. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Yeah. But I... He's doing a new movie and a book entitled Even Littler Women. So little. So little that they can't even be classified as women. <laughs> really, really little women. Raul said that R. Kelly has put out a tape called SpongeBob Wet Pants, and I don't <laughs> know whether that's in cartoon form. <laughs> SpongeBob up and down in my pants. All from R. Kelly tapes. See, I think he's just trying to get into another medium here, Roddy. Sure, you got to. He's conquered the music world. Oh, he's done a great job with it. Eric, you're on a fuzz. Hey, Eric. what's up, buddy? Yeah. I got uh, Harry Porter. Harry Porter instead of Harry Potter. Thank you very much. Now available on DVD. Here's, uh... Sal, you're on Ron and Fez. Sal. Hey, guys. How about Kitty Stretcher Size? Kitty Stretcher Size. <laughs> Oh, little, little workout video. Very nice. All right. Uh, Jersey Rich actually has one. Really? Yeah. Uh, Ren and Sticky. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Rich. <laughs> I always bust his balls. Here's uh, one from uh, Fly Mac that says uh, he's got a new series of books. Nice. Called Baby Sits on My Face Club. <laughs> I think you're familiar with Babysitter's Club. <laughs> yes. Some of these. <laughs> Mr. Kelly's Neighborhood. Thank you, Ed. He's taking off everyone's sweater. Here's my, the new song title thought <laughs> was called I Believe She Was Five. Thank you, Ted. Available on the original motion picture soundtrack. Here is uh, Brian. Brian, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Brian. What up, buddy? buddy? I heard uh, R. Kelly put out the Anal Maniacs with uh, Pinky and the Hairy Brain. Ah, oh, that's cute. Sure. Little Anal Maniacs. Thank you very anal much. Anal Maniacs. Pinky and the Hairy Brain. Here's uh, Gene. Gene, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Gene. Hey, buddy. It's Gene. I hear he's collaborating with uh, public television to put out Sesame Street Walkers. That's cute. It's kind of fun. To give something back to the community for the PBS stations. All right, Tickle Me Kelly dolls are available. Thank you there, Crazy Ed. The instant feedback just uh, blowing up on this. Power Muff Girls. Thank you, Clarky. Nice work. One after another. The R stands for Rape, <laughs> rape <laughs> Kelly. Rape we Kelly. We should have checked right away when we heard his name was R. <laughs> Kelly. There's uh, Brian. Brian, you're on Iron of Fez. Hey, Brian. What is? Yeah. But I. Hey, uh, R. Kelly's putting out a new uh, children's video called the Cabbage Batch Kids. Cabbage Batch Kids, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. To go along with the videos. Uh, Jesse, Jesse, you're on a fez. Buddies. Buddies. But I, How about the uh, R. Kelly Wee Wee Sing video? <laughs> Wee Wee Sing. <laughs> My Yellow Pony. Do we have a... Uh... Sweaty News Update. No, not yet. Okay. It's about to begin. He what's just came his, on. He well, just, what's the story with the president? Do we know what he's talking about? The president, I believe, is going to talk about, you know, how he, when he uh, named Tom Ridge director of Homeland Security. Yeah. I think he's reorganizing that branch of the White House again. I hope he fires Tom Ridge. <laughs> and he's calling for yet more help. He says Tom Ridge has been suspended until further notice. <laughs> he benched him. He benched Tom Ridge. So I think he's going to ask, I think he's going to talk about uh, reorganizing, yeah, like the FBI, that sort of thing. Why isn't he talking about R. Kelly in the new video line? That's what I'm interested <laughs> in. Here is uh, Mark. Mark, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Mark. 
Hey guys, yeah, a uh, new collaboration uh, with Disney Productions. Uh, I banged the Little Mermaid. I banged the Little Mermaid. Thank you very much. The little Mermaid, me do it. Uh, Tony, you're on Rana Fez. Tony. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, buddy. Bye, bye. So he's starring in uh, the new film, Dude, Where's My Daughter? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that one's actually funny. Here's uh, Monty. Monty, you're on Rana Fez. Hello, Monty. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. What about Winnie's Pooh and Tinkle Too? Winnie the Poon? Winnie, Winnie's Pooh and Tinkle Too. <laughs> Here's uh, James. James, you're on running Fez. The wonderful thing about Tinkle. Yeah. What's happening, buddies? Hey, buddy. Bye-bye. Yeah, here's going to be a new movie with uh, Dick Van Dyke called Kitty Kitty Bang Bang. Oh, that's cute. That's actually a sweet one. <laughs> I think it'll be a lot of fun. Kitty Kitty Bang Bang, we love you. Here's uh, David. David, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, David. Hey, uh, I got two new uh, kid shows. One's uh, Humper Room. <laughs> Humper Room, very good. Uh, and uh, Wing Pipe Alley. Who's got better? Who's actually got better callers than this show? Is there another show in America? No, there's that one that has better callers. Me and Fez might suck, but the callers are dead on. Every time. I like Humper Room, where he's looking in his mirror, calling out the girls' names. Andy, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Andy. Hi, hi, Fezzy. Uh, I heard he's going to star in uh, Steven Spielberg's new film, Close Encounters of the Third Grade. Now, that's cute. I think that one's cute, and I think the kids are going to like it. He's making a schlong out of his mashed potatoes. Uh, Tom, Tom, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Tom. Hey there, I hear he's going old school. Yeah. I am Curious Georgette. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Oh, all right, thanks. Bye, Curious George. <laughs> Here is, uh, Cornell. Cornell, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hello, Cornell. Hey, buddy. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Hey, how's it going, Ron and Fez? I got two videos that are coming out, and they'll be available tomorrow. It's called The uh, Wet Patch Kid and nice. The Little Whore That Could. A little whore that good. Thank you very much. The whore whisperer, Ronnie. R. Kelly is the whore whisperer. Jamie, you're on Ronnie Fez. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, he wants to make another videotape of Sesame Street. Tickle what? my Elmo. See, here's what I like. People sit down, they hear the premise, and they run with it, Fez. <laughs> they will They will build. They will help build the comedy pyramid, Ronnie. Name me better callers for any show. No show has better callers. Does Rush Limbaugh have better callers? No, they suck. I wouldn't say that. I'm not attacking them. <laughs> They're just not this funny. Here's they Mark. do. Here's Mark. Mark, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Mark. Hey, you guys hear about the new one, uh, Hairless Potter and the Babysitter Stones? The oh. Babysitter Stones. Thank you very much. And the Chamber of Secrets from your parents. Kenny, you're on Ron and Fez. Ah, new from uh, Sid and Marty Croft, CRF and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Kenny. <laughs> All right, now see if you can stay with this one. All right, I'll try. Joey Fat says George Clooney had Ocean's Eleven. R. Kelly has Oops, They're Eleven. I think once you set it up with the George Clooney thing, I think it works. <laughs> if you had thrown just Oops, They're Eleven yeah, it's at not gonna me, work. I probably wouldn't have gotten it. You led me through, and I appreciate that. Yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, I want to make sure Fats gets everything he's got. <laughs> Here is uh, Frankie. Frankie, you're on the uh, Ron and Fez show. You got an R. Kelly uh, video that's coming out? Actually, uh, he's going to revive an old, old show. I don't know if you remember uh, Captain Bangaroo. Captain Bangaroo, Fezzy. And, uh, Those are ping pong uh, balls he's dropping. And if you remember, he had a uh, sidekick on the show, Mr. Cream Jeans. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Hung Like a Moose. <laughs> well, next to a little kid, sure. <laughs> Everybody looks big. <laughs> Paul, you're on Ron and Fez. Paul. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Um, I got a new one, he says. <laughs> and the whole Wu-Tang Clan just raised their hand at the same time. 877-692-1027. Hey, have you had a chance to see, uh, is it called Yank Crankers or Crank Yankers? The I think it's Crank Yankers. Have you seen Crank? it yet? No, I haven't watched it. The Puppet Crank the, Call Show. The Puppet Crank Call Show. Nobody else has saw this? I caught the first one. Yeah? I thought it was a scream. Really? I think it was the first one. But it started out with, uh, it's all like different comics making the calls, and I thought it would be awful. I was cracking up. <laughs> Here's uh, Kevin. Kevin, you're on Ron and Fez. Hello, Kevin. Buddies. But I. Uh, new from Stephen King. Starring R. Kelly? Yeah. Children of the Porn. Children of the Porn. That's cute. And now, for some reason, Stephen King's involved in this. Here's uh, Paul. You're on Ron Fez. Paul. Hey, buddies. Yeah. 
Hey, uh, yeah, you don't have to change a name. He's making a cameo in Minority Report. That's nice. That's good. That works out good for him. It's <laughs> coming out in two weeks. Rich, you're in uh, Ron and Fez. Hey, Rich. Hey, guys. 4563. All right, buddy. hoo I hear he's uh, doing a remake of the Gene Kelly movie, Singing in the Yellow Rain. Oh, that's cute. And, you know, I, I was thinking maybe this bit had run its uh, course. No, I don't know, Fez. No, there's still some momentum. There's still steam. Mike, you're on a Fez. Mike, go ahead, buddy. Hey. Yeah. Uh, the new R. Kelly video? Yeah. Willie Wanker and the Sexual Chocolate Factory. That one I like a lot, as a matter of fact. I, now maybe I think they're getting stronger. <laughs> Get Mark Henry there for Sexual Chocolate. All right. On the instant feedbacks, Joe says, what about uh, My Little Boney? And that's coming, I believe, from R. Kelly. My Little Boney. Uh, Weird Beard said, Alice in Kelly Land. And then uh, forward to death just says, Oshkosh Padoosh. <laughs> Which might mean that the bits run out. Gosh, gosh, badoosh. Ed uh, says Disney classic is being done by R. Kelly. It's called Booty for the Beast. It's starring R. Kelly in an R. Kelly video. Here's Rick. Rick, you're on Run Fez, buddy. Hey, Rick. Yeah, James Garner and R. Kelly, the Rockford pedophiles. Thank you very much. The when? great Jimmy Gardner gets dragged in. Uh, Greg says it's a remake, Planet of the Rapes, and Glenn, <laughs> Glenn says it's HR stuff and muff. So I don't think the bits run out, Rory, if uh, you want to check. I think it's still moving. <laughs> I think there's plenty of time left on it. The lifespan is yeah. growing. Yeah, it's growing. Anthony, you're on Ronan Fez. Ronan Fez, how you doing? Hey, buddy. Yes, Anthony. Yeah, they're doing a, uh, a remake of American Psycho, titling it African American Pedophiles. All right, thank you. Sure. I don't know now. More than uh, now, uh, starting to teeter. Yeah. Starting to teeter. Anthony, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Anthony. Hey, yeah. How about the new TV show, Married to Children? Now we're back on top. <laughs> now we're moving again. Nice work, Anthony, getting us back on track. Thank yeah. you, Carlos. You're on uh, Ron and Fez. Hi, Carlos. Member seven six three zero. I have uh, of Monster Inc. I have Toddler's Inc. All right. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Uh-oh, sheepy horn. Wait a minute. All right, it's a good... Sweaty news update. Oh, There's good. Billy feeling comfortable enough to come in and grab headphones. Comfortable? The way he sweats. What What do you got, sweaty news update? Uh, just a brief uh, update on what President Bush was talking about. He had a couple of major announcements. What did he say? He said even with all the information intelligence that they received before 911, he said uh, it did not get enough attention, but it would not have prevented the attacks, even with, with, in, even with, with what they knew. Um, he was talking about Tom Ridge being... Uh, uh, made the Homeland Security Advisor, and he's going to reorganize the government for the 21st century. Right. He's getting rid of that Constitution We're getting rid that of the, we hate so much. Let's get rid of the Senate and the Congress. He's going he's gonna to ask Congress to uh, organize and create a whole new department of the government. Sweaty news update. I can't believe he's got the balls to come walking in while we're doing a killer bit, Fezzi, and step on it. Oh, With the is... fact that Tom Ridge has been named Homeland Security Advisor. But there's Last more to... year. What is it? Get but the... there's more to it. They're, 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 all, they're going to have a new department. It's going to be the Department of Homeland Security with four important functions. It's going to control our borders, respond to emergencies better, get all the scientists together to work on vaccines. Brian, Brian, you're on Ron Fest. How are you, buddy? Hey, Brian. Hey, buddies. How's it going? Yeah. Buddy? Yeah, R. Kelly's got a new kid cartoon coming out called oh. Rain Blow Bright. Rain Blow Bright, Fezzy. Now we're back on track. <laughs> there we go. We got Billy stapled, but we're moving back uh, into a, doing a show again. Here is uh, Ken. Ken, you're on Run of Fez. Hello, Ken. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah. How about the uh, rug burn rats? <laughs> I like rug burn rats, yeah, Ken. Okay, it's working. <laughs> Here's... Uh, Jug rats. Here's Phil. Phil, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Phil. What's up? What's up, guys? Yeah. Remember Sinatra? Remember the Rat Pack? Yeah. Well, the Fudge Pack. See you. I don't know. I think now we're, uh... Here's Rob. Rob, you're on Ron and Fez. I think we got stapled. Yeah. Ron and Fez. Yeah, buddy. I hear they're coming out with a soap opera series exclusive, exclusively for video called The Young and the Hairless. That's cute. Young and <laughs> Hairless, sure. Straight to a legal video from yeah. R. Kelly Tapes. See, because you're not allowed to have this other R. Kelly video anymore. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Can't now, have it's, it, now no. it's child porn. Can't have it anymore. So he's trying to put out some other tapes. Uh, I say allegedly child porn, Fuzzy. Allegedly. <laughs> Let's leave this up to the courts. 
sweaty news update. Right and first, just uh, Bush is going to realign the government as we know it. Take I, uh, Fury just said this in on a spy report. Spy report, Billy Staples has no sense of timing. Again, late news. Yeah. <laughs> To say that the president is reorganizing the government. It sounds like... That, the way Billy says that, it sounds like we're under martial law immediately. Exactly. We're not here to scare people. We're here to inform. And, yeah, they had they had knowledge, but uh, there's no way they could have prevented 9-11. Well, that's enough for him to decide. There's going to be other groups of people who will decide whether the FBI and CIA were on top of this and thing. And they're already having those hearings. Why should he take it upon himself? Uh, forget the hearings. I've looked into it myself this afternoon after lunch, and everything's okay. And according to the newly realigned government. Oh, and Michael Skakel's innocent. All right, that's it for me. I'm out of here. Enjoy the MTV Movie Awards. He thinks the government's like the NFL. I'm going to move a lot of things into the South, the South Division. Hey, did you say Kelly Osborne was singing tonight at those MTV Mo Movie Awards? Yes, she is. Now, why does MTV do this every year? Why do they pre-record their movie awards? Is it because the award part isn't that important? I think it's because they think uh, it's something crazy is going to happen, and they have, they're going to have to edit it out. And they need that many days to do it. That, I don't know why they wait that long. Yeah, I don't understand that. Sure, they could go on the uh, hour rule that Jeremy <laughs> Coleman invented. The Jeremy Coleman plan. The 60-minute the delay. Or do they think if this thing is just a total disaster, we don't have to play it at all? No, well, they plug it all this time. Jack Black's going to host, so that's normally funny. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, we did our picks a while back with Paul O. Did we do it? No, we did it in the office. It was um, Ron Fez, me, and Billy. God, does this mean we're going to have a sweaty news update? So how do we end up doing since we don't even have to wait for the awards Who to be won? given out tonight. You know what? I don't. Even, I remember being annoyed when we did them. Right. How many awards are there going to be and who picked the most? Mine's completely empty. I don't have any uh, picks on here at all. So just, do you, do you have an answer for me or yeah. am I going to have to relive it? No, Ron, you uh, you won with, um, I'm sorry, you have, uh, you won with uh, six wins. Nice, Ronnie. Way to go. Out of how many, though? Um, we had, uh, I believe it was 11. Out of 11 out awards? Of 11. That's not too bad. Six out of 11 gives you the win? All right. Nice well, work, I Ronnie. I my own big I'm, thing of popcorn. I must have done horribly. I think <laughs> I went with a whole Lord of the Rings sweep yeah, you of the did. night. Yeah, I think uh, what happens when we pick this Lord of the Rings had just come out, and you were all caught up and excited <laughs> about whatever week it is, that's your favorite movie you've ever seen. If the nominees came out this week, it would be the sum of all fears. I'd be giving, I'd be giving Ben <laughs> Affleck everything. Did anybody see that Ben Affleck movie? I just don't want to go see a movie where a nuclear bombs blowing up. I have not seen it, and they have that warning of disaster images. I think is what they label on there now. Yeah, I don't see how anybody in uh, New York would want to uh, sit down and watch this. It was number one at the box office last weekend. I think it took in like just over 30. All right, bring Al in. Bring Al in. The fabulous Al Dukes. Go ahead and grab him. Here he comes. Al, why didn't you bet this with us? I don't know where I was when this was going on. I would have loved to have been involved. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Somebody told me that you were throwing a temper tantrum in our office, uh, saying now that this fight doesn't seem fair and it's a setup. And we uh, settle everything right. with fights here. And that's not true. Sometimes we'll do it with darts. It's not always fights. Yeah, I was uh, having a crazy afternoon here. Why are you having a crazy afternoon? What's I was bothering you? Well, I was riled up from last night. And that's all I was thinking of on my way in here. And it was just building up, building up. I was so super frustrated. And then when I got in today, I wanted to, you know get everything done that i need to get done quickly so everything carried over from last night we even went home early last no. night after the show yeah, yeah. and last night so everyone I went, could get a little bit more sleep yeah and when i went home everything was cool but about 11 o'clock today it just i started going in my head about 
this guy says he's showing up tonight, and it just, just drove me up a wall. And I because Gay Randy called last night, and he always gets on your nerves, and then he was screaming at Stephen Baldwin. Right. Yeah, it was just, and I didn't even listen back to it, but I know I shouted so loud into this microphone. Not only that, you shouted in the microphone, you threw it and hit the ceiling. You also screamed at uh, little Gary, the O and A kid. Right. A twelve-year-old kid. Boy, and I believe you offered to box him. But why not, when you get this frustrated, why are you angry at me and Fez? No, I'm angry at, m at me and my situation. I, and then I, then I was trying to put together... That there's a possibility that you could be unemployed in a very short period of right. time? Right, on top of every... Uh, 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 when I start sitting there thinking about everything, it starts to drive me crazy. I mean, the... the, the you kicked a chair across the room right. last night. The craziness with that, with, with uh, if I lose and... Then what am I doing? I don't. I don't know. It's just think of it this way: you'll be out of work. Well, that's not a good thing. You have plenty of oh, free yeah. time. You have like a big savings to pay off uh, all your bills and stuff. No, I'm considering winning this, so I don't. You don't sound like a winner to me. Well, it was just you know what it was. I, I was driven so crazy yesterday that I, I don't know. It just it, it drained me. I was I was. Physically drained today by the time I even got in here just from the craziness. What is your problem with Randy? Gay Randy, the guy that you once made out with and it seemed like no. you get along good with. The and by the way, when I uh, look at the instant feedbacks, half bet say, stop the Al, stop the gay Randy. Horde King, and the other ha half love it. Horde King said the last hour of the show last night was the most hysterical he's ever heard. And I don't know whether he meant funny or you just sounded hysterical last night. Like a hysterical woman screaming shrilly. Right. I mean, at one time you made out with Randy, no, but and now you go crazy getting that's, angry. That is the thing that drives me crazy the most because it was a, it was that time that I was tricked into it when I was blacked out from drinking, and then it just gets replayed. And this guy calls in. He all, that's all he ever but here's the talks thing. about. But you, Al, are carrying this dead man walking. You're kind of, the eyes have glossed over now. Right. You're not the same Al Dukes. No, I'm it's not. It's that thousand-yard stare that we always it's talk about. the thousand-yard stare that the, the guys in Vietnam would get, and that's when you know it was the next guy going to be hit. No I'm, concentration. Right. I agree. I agree completely. And I don't know uh, how I'm going to gonna get over the hump there. What has you the most upset right now? The fight, gay Randy last night, the fact that you screamed at a child, uh, you got mad at Stephen Baldwin. Uh, what has you the most upset? The gay Randy stuff. I, I it just It's the, it's the it, same here's crap Mike. over and over again. Mike. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah. Listen, you guys are hysterical. I mean, you guys are the funniest guys on radio. Uh, well, you know, I don't understand why we have to go with Al Dukes like every single night. It gets old, man. Now, I get, I get, fast and you pick on him relentlessly, and it just gets old. It really does. You guys are funny. You guys got a lot of gigs. You got a lot of things going on. And you have to pick on this poor son of a bitch. He just comes to work, and, and he's miserable. You can tell in his voice. Now, Al, do you feel like we pick I mean, on you, we, or other people do? or no, the things Do you that, blame all this on me and Fez? No. You can't hear you break it off. So I don't. I want you to break it up. up. You are. We're sitting here in front of microphones. I don't mind. Go ahead, Al. Joking around stuff. That, yeah. that stuff's fun. The gay Randy things bugs me because then inevitably we play the tape again, and that drives me up a wall because I really feel like that was not the right thing to do that night to the, in the condition I was in. And then he just he's not funny, and he he really I, I hate to keep saying boring, but he it's so boring because he just repeats. The same lines, and and it's so frustrating because no one really cares. I don't think. I'm getting worked up already. For yeah, you're no getting reason. angry. Well, maybe he won't come, and maybe everything will be all right, and you won't have to deal with him. The other thing too is, Fez. Yeah, uh, you know, I I kind of feel like you're mad at me and Fez for what happened at night when you said the right thing didn't happen. Like you're blaming us. Well, I think I was in a weird situation, and I wish that that. That, we that I wasn't have... tricked into that. Right, but you feel like we pr tricked you, or... You... Oh, Christ. Oh, jeez, here comes Gay Randy. Oh. oh, hi, Gay Randy. Hey, guys. Hey, media whore. <laughs> Dick. Mediahorse.com, uh, by the way. Wee, wee, wee. Media media, uh. It's mediahorseonline.com. Oh, okay. Fantastic website. <laughs> wee, 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 media whore. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh yeah. Do you suck so bad? You are the worst. Yeah, you'd you love are some literally right the worst. You'd love some. All right, Please. now wait. Let's go through that. No, did you sign a release form? Let's get this I over did. with right away. Did we write on it that you that you by you knowing that you're coming in here, you could get punched? Did we write that down? Did you sign that part? I'm actually I'd like to see it. Who has it? Who has it? Right now I just walked hey, out. He just, you know, and it's more equipment getting hurt. <laughs> All right, Al, what's wrong now? I'm having him sign this. If not, you leave. Is that cool? It's right there. There it is. Al, why are you signing it? All right, Al. Uh, <laughs> I'm writing it out. All right, tell us what you're writing, Al. Is this uh, another there. contract that Wonder Boy typed up? <laughs> there is a possibility. The possibility, yeah. That by coming in here tonight... Oh, trust me, there'll be some coming. Yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's clever gay references, because that's uh, good stuff, and the audience doesn't expect that from you, so you really caught us off guard. Can you say that, by the Shut way? Shut up. No, you can't say it. And you know nothing about broadcasting. As much as you call into every radio show and try to be the gay, funny gay guy, you still don't know anything about broadcasting. Al, what Al, you know what the funny thing is? First of all, you, the, you know how many radios are being turned off because you bore everybody to death? Well, I'll tell you this. I wouldn't turn off a radio if I knew that somebody was signing out a thing, a contract saying you may be punched by being in here. <laughs> and then we'll see whether Randy signs it or not. Right. So, um, and let us know what that says when you're all done writing it out. Okay, it's all ready. All right, just tell us what it says. It says there's a possibility that by coming into the studio tonight, you might get punched by Aldix. Initial it. <laughs> Right, he doesn't have to the sign. little rascals didn't have contracts like this. All right, there he is. Perfect. He signed it. Well, then we can continue. All right. You feel better with that Absolutely. sign? Absolutely. Do we okay. get his ID? It's Randy. ID. He's been in here a lot right. of times. I'll vouch for him that he's gay Randy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and now you can't get mad at gay Randy for coming in here and doing a few gay jokes. Ruining if the you, show. If you want to see Louis Anderson and he did no fat jokes you'd be just yeah, really disappointed would you go see louis anderson every night knowing he's going to do the same material every single night i might people listen to the show every night alan you're right. still gay right that's great stuff. i see that's the kind of stuff that gets them upset it's because it's you know what gets me upset that you're ruining airtime it's it's not funny no one no one right now sitting in their car went Haha, that was a good one because he made a gay <clears throat> reference no one is doing that no one cares I mean, you understand that, right? That no one finds this funny. Absolutely. We okay. don't know that. The so research isn't back yet. So you're here to mostly bore people. All right, let's get back to this, though, because I think it's not so much what he says or the fact that you think that he's redundant. I think this might have to go back to the point that you guys kissed. And now, from what I'm understanding now, you're kind of blaming some of us on that. Well, everyone... I, look, I was passed out, blacked out, whatever you want to talk. Okay, yes, I was standing and talking, blah, blah, blah. But... I did not know what I was doing when I was set up like that. And I wasn't happy about that, no. But the fact that he did it also, that Randy did that, knowing I'm not gay and I did not want that, that is a, a very low level of practically raping someone. A very low level. I'm not equating it to rape. But to make a sexual advance like that on someone that doesn't know it and is blindfolded, is that, what you, is that, is that how you do it? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I did one. it that night. Right. Yeah. Well, that's. But again, again, that's it's great. Not, it's so you not felt like, like he stole the kiss. No, I, I feel like it, it's like tying me up and then having a guy, uh, you know, tying me up uh, and then having the guy do whatever he wants. No, to but me. But I, I, I encountered no resistance whatsoever. I was blindfolded and blacked out, and th once again, we're reliving oh. those few seconds of your life. It was great for you, right? About and 10. here's the thing. This is the thing that you keep coming back on the air because you're trying to get over get something better than that. You're never getting anything better than that. So that's it. Move on. Or pick another show. All right, let me ask you this. Would you guys this like to have a drinking contest? Absolutely not. I'm not doing anything with him and there's nothing there's no contest, there's no game show, there's no more let's involve gay randy and it's just none right. of that. Rock and roll jeopardy. St right, nothing. All right, what? but we don't say rock. We change that to C word. Oh, no. Oh, dick. If you're going to come in here to talk to these mics, the three of us here don't care to hear it. If you're going to say things that get dumped, don't come in here. I know, but you just said dick. I can say dick. I can't. You can't say what he said. Oh. What can I say then? 
It's so confusing. Well, everything you say is gay-related, so most of the stuff that you want to say, you can't say. Okay, then I won't say anything gay-related. Right. How Perfect. about that? All right, yeah. Great. Let's, not, let's do that tonight. All right. right. No gay-related right, jokes. That's I'll just be, be funny, Randy. Okay, great. And I bet I can, I can out-funny you. Uh, I'm not, we're not doing contests here. It's not I'm a not, contest. There's nothing <laughs> with... You're not involved in the show with witty contests. There's nothing. There's no contest. Okay? Okay. And I also wanted to make this clear. Do you think this is a wacky bit, like, I'm going to go out the room, and when you come out of the room, it's going to be, hey, that was a great radio. This isn't radio bit. I'm no. serious. No, my challenge. Do you know? Do you know that? Al, you challenged Do you know it? You challenged me not to be Randy, dead. do you know this? Do Look me in the eye and tell me that this is not a bit. What? I am pissed off at you. This is not a bit. Do you understand that? Understand what? That, that, what do I have to say? This is not a bit. All right, Al. Do you get it? Say yes or no. Into Al. the mic. Al. Huh? Say it. Yes or no. I'm going to have to think about that. Right. Then get out. This is not a bit. This isn't funny radio I'm stuff. I'm not being gay tonight. It's not a bit. I don't care. Okay? It's not a bit. Say it into the microphone. It's not a bit. And then we'll move on. Why don't you just say it's not a bit? It doesn't mean it. And then we'll move on. It's not a bit. That way you know that when I walk out of here... The tension doesn't it doesn't get erased. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you understand that? Sure. Okay. No. So then you know it's there. not a bit. Can you say that? I think he knows. Say it. I think he knows. It's say not it or a bit. don't say. Say it or leave. It's fine. It's not. Do you a need bit. him to Thank sign you. something that you want to write up. Thank you. All right. Because a lot of times, though, with you, some of the stuff comes across as a bit. None I, of us I'm know. I'm making it crystal clear tonight. Even that thing, I wasn't sure whether it was a well, bit or great. not. Yeah. Is that a bit, Al? That, well, whatever you guys want to take it as. I mean, we're trying. Comedy bit. I don't think it was a bit. You never know. How's it going, guys? Good. How you doing? It's good. Pretty good. Everything's good. I think Al's changed a lot in the times that he's been with us. It used to be, it took a lot of beers before we saw this Al Dukes. Right. Now we see it instantly. Mm. Al, what do you think changed for you? Over the past year. The redundancy of everything gay, 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 gay Randy, funny make-out clips. It, it, it's it's so, I'm so bored with it and over it. it, it I got to move on. It, it, this is not funny. This isn't funny, Randy. It's the same crap every time you call. What we could do is everyone can relax. We'll get the discs, the CDs of the last time you came in here. It's the same show. It's the same thing. All right, Al, he I'm not trying to be a redundant. I'm yes, you are, word. though. You are a rerun. You're the one bringing you up all the rerun. You are the rerun. The past why show. would you come in here then tonight? Because. Because why? Rory called me up, and I'm the, no, he I'm didn't. the guest tonight. No, he didn't. I guarantee he didn't call you up. Did you call me up, Rory? Yes, I did. Well, it's I, another finely produced show, then. Uh, rerun. Let's call this one Best Of. So tonight, I'm just going to be Randy. Is that an attack at Donna Mike? Now, because of that happening, Al, do you feel like you owe him apologies since Please. Rory has them in? Right. No, I don't. He was invited. Not by me. I'm the producer. And he's agreed not to do the stuff that you keep saying is redundant. Well, then... Uh, then and we're... you're the one that keeps bringing it up still. Right. All right, let's uh, move on. Randy, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, interesting material? We'll, we'll handle the interview. You don't have to do that for us, Al. We can handle the interview. It's fine. See, we I, we He's really have nothing. Do you notice? There's dead air because we have nothing to talk to you well, about other talk, than you're the gay guy. Talk to, what do you do for a living, Randy? We <clears> never <throat> had a chance to talk about um, that. I work at a um, um, design firm. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah, it breaks a stereotype. Yeah. What do you design? Clothes? No. Um, interiors. Oh, right. so like design. restaurants and stuff. Oh, oh yeah. nice. You guys did great with that Russian tea room. <laughs> that place is gorgeous inside. Here is uh, Rusty. Rusty, you're on the Ron Fest show. Hello, Rusty. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah. I was wondering if you guys were going to be taking a poll, but it looks like he already did his meltdown. I was trying to find <laughs> out how long it was going to take out before you broke down and screamed or threw something and got mad. But that went out pretty quick. I must say, though, it's a lot more entertaining when you are being gay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rusty. Here's... Did he mean me? No. Okay. Because uh, it's not gay Randy tonight, guys. No, it's just uh, regular it's just, guy Randy. It's just Randy, yeah. <laughs> just go old buddy Randy. Macho Randy Savage. See, do uh, you see how easy it is to just, you know. Just be straight? Yeah. yeah. Could you not interrupt every two seconds? This Here's, is a uh, show. Uh, now I feel like you're picking on him, though, Al. Here's Kenny. Kenny, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Hello, Kenny. Up, 
I just wanted to say that this bit is hysterical, and Al's never been funnier. Uh, thank you very much, but I, this is not a bit with you, right, Al? No, this is, this is a bit. Al, Kenny's confused. Uh, not a bit. Come uh, on, Al, you know it's a bit. Do you, you and I want to... You don't you have want... any testosterone right. in your body to okay. get your voice you up and I want, You want me to do the same bit with you? I just did with Randy. We are not a bit, is a bit. We did this already. Let's go. Alex, to keep everything moving. You move like a Absolutely. shark. Absolutely. You, you move like a like... fast-paced show. Absolutely. Yeah. You do. You, you would like the old Zood shows from yeah. the 70s. The way they... Hmm. <laughs> Mike, you're on a fez. Tookie, tookie, in and out. Hey, Mike. Ronnie Fezzi. Yeah, but I... I'm just wondering, I'm about to turn the radio off. I'd just like to know when I can turn it back on when Al won't be on. Bothering me, personally. All right, now you're just getting Al mad. And some, you know... Let's just have a fun night tonight. We'll get the whole gang I like that. Tonight. Here's uh, Adam. Adam, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hello, Hello Adam. Fez. Yeah. I just want to make three really quick points. Okay. All right. All right, one... I think you guys are selling yourself short in the fact that that studio is yours and you guys are the artists. You know, it is your show. I love it when we get called artists, It Ronnie. happens so rare. I know. You are I the believe, talent. I believe comedy is an art form and very few people do. You are the talent. I think that's getting overlooked. Two, Al's got to stop speaking on the fans' behalf, saying that, you know, deciding what's boring and which guests, you know, should be there or speaking on your behalf. And three, it doesn't seem... Like, Al ever figures out when he's wrong. It doesn't matter if he gets beaten once, twice, in an argument. You cannot convince him that he's wrong. What am I wrong about here? What am I wrong about? What could possibly could be right or wrong about this situation? <laughs> Al, you come up with an excuse every time you're proven wrong with something. D give me the specific for this situation. Right, 102 fever. This is not this situation, idiot. Or that you can beat Rory in boxing because you okay, had 25 hours of lessons? When you get to this situation that we're in right now, let me know. Well, the one where you said that Randy just showed up and he told you Rory invited him. That and might, may or may not be true. How do I know that's true? Rory <laughs> said so. Are you speaking on Ron, on Ron Fed's behalf as yes. to whether someone's welcome? Yes, I am. He's I angry. think things need to be put in perspective right. and you need to be put in your place. Right. Well, go ahead. Are you going to put me in my place? I think you're forgetting. You guys are tailored the show towards the... Listeners. Right. It's the listeners that matter, not yeah. you, Al. Well, then, sh you're insignificant. then quit calling me. you insignificant. Don't call me up, then. Why are you talking to me if I'm, I'm so calling insignificant? Ronnie Fez. That's the whole you're point. You're talking to me right now, then. You're missing the right. whole point. I'm missing the point. Why you talk to me that I'm insignificant? Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Adam. Here's, you? Uh, here's Susie. Susie, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fezzy. Yeah. Hey, Susie. That was the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life. When Al snapped like that, I don't listen to Ron and Fez so I can be frightened. You know what I mean? Now the listeners are scared. Great. No, I w I've, I've known men in the past who, you know, they're, they're good for years. And Al always seemed like a quiet guy to me, but mm -hmm. he's just like a psychopath right there. You could hear the anger in his bubbling through his throat. Al? Yeah, you think? You think he could end up like um, a wife feeder, like an OJ? Yeah, a child feeder. Totally. Abuser? Like it's. It is one of those guys who's, you know, wears the same clothes every day, uh, listens to Bon Jovi, and then the next thing you know, he's slicing up people. Hmm. Yeah. Next thing you know, Especially, they're on the cover you know, of the Daily Indian News. Guy with a white girl. <clears throat> you know that guy? The Brit Butcher. You know <laughs> the thing about him, by the way? Yeah. He admitted that he was a killer before he admitted he was gay. Is that right? It's going to count as gay material. Because he let the baby I'm not die. talking about you, Al. <laughs> you have nothing to do about that this. I'm talking about a serial killer from England. We're talking, gay about a, story. we're talking about a butcher. Yes, I know it's a legit story, but it's gay related. Again, you can't move it. You open the goddamn paper, all you saw was the gay story. Well, it's it's, it's, the it's on the page. cover of the Daily right. News. You can't ignore it. Right. All right, Susie's getting scared. <laughs> Susie, are you all right? I'm okay, but, but, but you, I am a little scared. <laughs> I yeah. felt like she's got nothing it's to be afraid. It's nervous afraid. laughter. Susie, what do you look like? Um, five nine. Really? One thirty-five. Mm. You have a penis. He'd love to know. All right. Oh, you're doing gay material. Well, that was banned tonight. <laughs> Come on, Al. No, Al, I'm no good for you. That's, I don't have a penis. That's hilarious. Good that's, stuff. What color's your hair? Brown. Really? What time does uh -huh. the Gay Randy show start now? All right. So and I gotta say, you know, it's Gay Randy, Randy is funny no matter he's what show he's on, Al. Yeah, he no matter what show because there's so many to choose from. I was Whatever. talking to a girl, right. Al. Go ahead. Whatever. The person, too, you know. All right, thank you, <laughs> Susie. Al, you know what? Five pumps, yeah, it's yeah. just no good. Yeah, so great. You're whether correct. you're gay or you're, you're scared, scared of what's coming pumps. out of your speaker, so, so just relax and shut off your radio if it frightens you. 
Please don't. We Enjoy like the show. We'd like to keep everybody, everybody listening. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Susie. She sounded beautiful. And she frightened. sounded b- delightful. I think you're getting a little stressed here, Al. And you got a big fight against Rory coming right. up. This loser leaves show. Maybe Rory's doing this to uh, get in the kitchen a little bit. Sure. If he invited him in, he is. Have you talked to your uh, trainer, Steve Miller? Uh, not much since uh, the last fight. What did he say to you? Well, he wants a rematch with Earl. Mm. Did he feel like it's a bad reflection on him? Or Yeah, that uh, because I lost with my 102 fever, that uh, he, the other trainers are mocking him that he didn't train me right. Yeah, you actually went further rounds in the first fight right. against Joe Pooh than with the training. Hmm. So uh, what you say back to him? So he's refusing to train you now? No, not at all, but we've really just exchanged voicemails. Because you don't want to lose your trainer so close to the really the biggest bout of your career. Right. I don't know. That'll this... screw up a fighter. Fezzy, I think this... we all saw Rocky Three. <laughs> does this seem like a suicide run to you? It could be. Blaze of Glory here? Yeah. Blaze of Glory, or is he just going to go on his uh, back and count the lights? Is he going to... Oh, I hope it ain't going to be Job Squad. <laughs> yeah, is he going to job this thing Blaze just so that Randy will uh, not be in his life anymore? One, two, three, <laughs> pin me, pay me. Is it going to be Blaze of Glory or West Side Story? <laughs> Oh, that was a Broadway Good, reference. That was just Sorry. Broadway. Yeah, that just Broadway. Theater. Theater. Everybody That's just goes, musical theater. Was that, who did that? Was that Rodgers and Hammerstein? Everybody yeah. goes. Yeah. I think they were straight. Sure. <laughs> I All think right. it was Sally Rogers, though. All right, here's Mike. Mike, you're on Ron Hey, hey Mike. Boys, what's up? Yeah. I'll tell you, man. Between the friggin' anger, the unemployment and the fighting, Jesus, Al, you sound like a cross between The Shining, Tyson versus Lewis, and, and uh, what the hell is the name of that Arthur Miller play? Death of a Salesman. Which one are you, Al? Are you more Willie Loman? No. <laughs> I'm not Willie Loman. Because sometimes you get real depressed and you get the far off stare. Right. And then sometimes it seems like when Randy comes around, you get very, very furious. Yeah, every time. I would say, yeah, that's. Uh, You're a mood, Al. Obviously. And if you have that far off stare, when you get into the ring against Rory, he's going to clobber you, Al, if you can't concentrate. And then I remember also last night when you got this furious, one of the things you did was you screamed at Gary the O&A kid. Right. At a 12-year-old boy. Well, he, everyone, she's trying to call in. Everyone's shouting behind him. I mean, come on. If you're going to call in, do the report right or don't do it. You banned him from the show last night. Right. right After game a- one. Of the NBA Finals. <laughs> He's on the line. Would you talk to him and we'll... Uh, no, but that's the thing. When you're banned from the show, you don't knock back on it. That's the thing. What are we, what's he going to... What's his spy report tonight? Nothing? The Lakers play tomorrow. Yeah, we know. I we know. Do that do impression it. of him again. The Lakers play tomorrow. He's a 12-year-old boy. I know, but... Uh, right. You shouldn't be calling radio shows every day. Well, we put him in charge of the basketball. He's been yes. doing it for us. He's right. a I'll nice do the, kid. I can do the update for you. Uh, Lakers, uh, Nets, game two tomorrow. Thank you. Spy report over. No need to go to O&A, kid. We know. We, we are aware of when the next game Well, I game think he wanted to apologize and explain what happened last night. <laughs> well, that's only fair. Now, that's a kid who's doing, trying to do the right thing. Email it in. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. I don't know if he has a computer. Try to talk to the O&A, kid. We're here with just regular Randy, <laughs> yeah. Al, of course, Rory. Rory, you feel proud of yourself? You're behind this whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, I do feel proud of myself. Do you ever see really? the movie Gaslight? I feel like he's gaslighting you, Al. Do you feel like you've been gaslit? No, I'm not sure what that is. Rory, this isn't a gay thing at all, but if you've been working out, you look, you look in much better shape than the last time I saw you. No, no, I'm not doing any training whatsoever. Really? He promised Allie wouldn't train. <laughs> That's part of the stipulations, and then you have to initial it. All right, we'll take a break and come back. You're listening to the Ron and Fez Show. 1027 WNEW, New York. Ron and Fez, Big Ass Radio. 1027 WNEW. Ron and Fez, Randy sitting in with us tonight. Regular Randy. How you doing, regular? How's it going, guys? Good. 
A lot of... Uh, just a couple of straight guys hanging out tonight, right? Yeah, just three straight guys. Yeah, right. We're all going to be Here straight. we are. <laughs> wow. Never felt like uh, so alone in my life. Why is that? Eh, uh, you know. Are We're you... just regular guys. Are you Canadian? Two-thirds of the show pretending they're straight. Uh, just gets me a little, uh, you know. It just seems uh, interesting to me, that's all. You mean now? Yeah. Yeah. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. All right, here's... Uh, by the way, Al is out in the uh, lobby, Tillman. I don't know whether he's coming back in, so he's walking around. Here's uh, Gary, the O&A kid. How you doing, Gary? Hey, guys. I'm sorry about last night. I'm really sorry. Uh-huh. It was all a mix-up. And you know what? Al can shut his big, oh, shut up. faggot ass. You know what? Shut yeah, your mouth. Try calling when I'm on the phone. See if you get through, you punk. Shut up, you old faggot. Yeah, see if you get through. All right. No, see if you get through. Shut up. Oh, see if you get through. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Al. Right, just call tomorrow. Right, Al, up. step you know outside what? your body and just look at yourself for a second. You're Guys, yelling. Are you have been big as in fight three. Yeah, well, it's going to be just a quick fight. It's probably either going to be here in the lobby or we're going to do it right outside of the building. I want to challenge him. No, that's okay, Gary. Ugh. We'll never get away with that one. I just want to freaking rip his head off. I, I know, and I think I, you could. Here's what had Al upset with you last night, Gary. Num number one, I guess you had your buddies with you that were yelling and messing up yeah, the report. Yeah, they, they were messing up the spy report. Right, and then while that was happening, you used the F word twice right. and we had to dump yeah, out. Yeah, I know. I apologize about that. That's you know so you can't do that. I know. I was trying to cover it up, and I got a little angry. Yeah. All right, who were those kids? No, it's two of my friends, and they were just joking around with me. And I, I guess they didn't know that I was on the air, and they were just yelling that out. Are they bad kids? No. That you shouldn't be hanging out with? No. I've known them for half of like a couple of years now. Four years. Four years, Fezzi knows them. Third they of never, his life, Ronnie. They, they, never, known they never did anything like this before. One's my stepbrother, and another one's uh, my friend upstairs. He's All right, neighbor. so it's his friend upstairs and his stepbrother. All How's right. It, how's it going, Gary? That's Randy, just regular. Hey, Randy, just regular Randy. <laughs> That's him, regular he's Randy. He's man, he's just regular. <laughs> he sure is. He's just a regular guy. He's not the guy that made out with Al Dukes and took him out of the closet. Is this kid really 12? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You'd never know, would you? <laughs> Who do you think's going to win the playoffs, Gary? Uh, Nets. They'll come back. They'll well, come back? Geez. Maybe Al's right. They're in the NBA, <laughs> They're in the NBA playoffs? Yep. Oh, the yeah. Nets. I thought yeah. you said the Mets. Oh, uh, that's okay. Yeah. You know who's on the Mets? <laughs> Mike Piazza. All right, don't All right. start. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I like him. He's he's pretty good to play. He's a pretty good. What does he play? Catch. I know. Well, I, I loved want, him. I want to remind All everyone right. we're talking to a twelve-year-old boy. Right. Let's all stop that. All right. So we're going to give you another shot there, but you can't curse on the air anymore. It okay? won't happen. All right. You promise? It won't happen. And Al, if you ever shut up. Uh, yeah, because you you got, no, you keep talking. Keep talking. Tomorrow when I answer the I phone, like I'll hang up on you. Like I'll hang up on you. Good. You, you, your life is this, your life is calling in with your bad spy report, so I'll hang up on you. That's all. I guess we won't hear you tomorrow, will we? We won't hear you tomorrow, will we? Sorry. I'll do the update since it's on a major network that we all see. Right. That's Don't be a flame, you faggot. Well, you're doing game material, which is all new. We understand. Oh, right. oh big whoop, right? It's a repeat. This is right. a test of your flamer. Right, good one. Well, we, we will not hear from you tomorrow because I'll hang up on you when you call. Oh, guess what? So, I hope Billy really be taking my call. Right. So you know what? At the right. fire part, I'll tell the squad now. You know what I'll say? What's but that? But now on, I'll say, Curse? I'm a faggot. Bye. That's a good one. That's right, clever. Flamer. All right, Flamer, if I see okay. you ever, what are you if I do? ever go you're out of here, I will punch you down your head. Right, you're a little child. Oh, I'm a little child. I can yes, knock you, you out. No, I you got a power behind my fist right. to shut your mouth. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, like, you what? You right. go down in nine seconds right. with the guy that's out of shape. You're a little boy. Please, let's yeah, stop. Yeah, you do. You shut the hell up. You're a little boy. Flamer, 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 Flamer. All right, Gary. All right. I'll talk Sorry to you for any more trouble and some more. Right. You shut up now. We'll talk to you when Billy's on the phone. Yeah, stop it. Stop it, you old faggot. All right, I do think it was a big man of him to uh, apologize. And if I remember the conversation we just had, he explained who the kids were. He apologized for them. He said it wouldn't happen again. We said, all right. And then everything was calm until Al, you started screaming at a child again. Yes, he's got he he didn't he then he went right into Al is gay and Al's a fag all those uh, great lines. 
Al, it's not your decision Ugh. to make a, you know, a decision tough, like that. It's the new tough producer, Roy Hampton. No, you're not, it's not your decision to like say, Gary, you can't even. call in. Gary, you can't call in. What's with this? It sounds like a fake voice and everything. That's my, that's my real voice, right. okay? Oh, that's great. I don't have that gay voice right. like you do. But that's good stuff. But it's uh, another gay reference, and we and we don't have that around here. Rory, so, you and not enough witty people uh, to come up with the gay voice, uh, funny stuff like that. So uh, another one on board. Great. I thought I was the only one banned from right. using the gay references right, tonight. All right, yeah. here's a drop Seriously. that it, that isn't uh, nothing mentioned was with gay, but you did say this. <laughs> wee 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 boring. <laughs> right. I absolutely said. <laughs> wee 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 boring. Right. So maybe that's what you can do when you're mad at people. <laughs> and the odd thing is, that's gayer than any of them. Here's uh, here's Liz. Liz, you're on Rana Fez. Hello, Hi, Liz. Guys. Yeah. Well, some guys. Um, first of all, I'm writing a book right now. It's called The Anatomy of Motive. It's by John Douglas, who's an FBI agent. Interesting. And the thing that he says in there is that people that he's a profiler, and he says that people like Al, right? That's how he says the book. People everybody, like Al. It you says don't take like any responsibility for your right. actions. You accuse a little twelve-year-old. Right. You have to fight him. You do not take any responsibility for anything. You're in a fight and you right. say that you lost it because you had 102 fever. You don't take any responsibility for any of your actions. Right. You blame a little kid on the phone because that's the only way you can get your power. Right. You're a weakling right. and you're always... And it says oh, that in like, the book? I'm saying something that, that is in your wrong. Book? Ta- prove what are you me that I'm, I don't even prove know what you're talking right about. Oh, because you yes. can hang up She's on She's reading me. a book. Oh, you're such a man. What, what are man. you talking about? I wanted to hear what you, the book said. Right. so not a man. This is what it says. It's, it's, please bore us to death. This is exactly <sighs> what it says. Wee, 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 boring. What is boring about it? It's bo- you You're reading a book on the radio. That's boring. You do not take any responsibility for oh, your actions. You want to read his recipes, too? You blame too? a 12-year-old kid it says that in the for book. your inability right. of dealing with society. Right. You cannot deal on a level. You, you wait, speak you English to us. You 20-year-olds because right. you're a 30-something-year-old man 30 years that you, ca- you have nothing right. in common with a 30-something-year-old woman. How old are you? I'm a 36-year-old. Wow. And you would never know That's it. That's old. Faggot. Yes, we would all know You it. would never know it. Looking at you, the lines oh, in your face. Oh, believe me, Al. And first we would of all, know, I don't have to prove me. myself to right. you. Uh, why, why, you why, why do I have to prove myself to you? You call it. Why do I have to prove myself to you? Listen to you. So you go dumb. crazy. So when you calling up with you. reading a book to me? Listen to me. It's pointless. You, you've never read a book, obviously. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, I know. You've had a math. Right. You have a yeah, I do. And what do you have? Where did you go? High school. You have a math. Did you get out of high school? You're such a math. Did you get out of high school? I. Right, let me do an impression. Right. Let me do oh, an like impression of, Ma- right. of Al's you're master's good. degree. Yeah, you're totally happy to. I remember that master's Al, degree. I'm totally happy to. You're so good. I got great. hit with a piece of it. Right, thanks, Liz. Uh, Al, you fight with everybody. Uh, it says right here in my book, Al yells out, Liz, this doesn't say that in your book. Was she Maybe that chat. <clears throat> your motive. Yeah. It's just the, uh, you're reading a book on the radio. It's very fascinating to us. I I thought maybe it had some insights. I would have loved to heard it. But no, the screaming has to start again. All right, Tenacious C just dropped by. How you doing, C? Hi, Tenacious C. <laughs> Hello. Where were you today? Uh, Valhalla. Oh, jeez. What a job. Huh? Isn't that like Viking heaven? <laughs> yeah. She just got back from Viking heaven. Is this, wow. no, this is Tenacious C? Yeah. That's her. Hi, hi. I've never actually That's regular Randy. Randy, isn't she hot? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. You're right. When did you, you get your hair done? Like, I don't... No, I'm just wondering. I think but, she's got beautiful hair. Is this oh, the regular you. Randy show today? Shut up. Let them I'm, do I'm a, a sh- show. When they go to you for something clever, then you can... That's funny. Like, I was just saying... Didn't we just I, go to him? Yeah. That's funny. I was just saying right. hi to a girl. Right. And then you don't have to go, when did you do your hair on the radio that we can't see? Ah, I just think it looks Why really good. Why don't you ask good. her what about the striped shirt she's wearing since we're on the radio? Good. That's great stuff. No, you're out of material. Um, okay, tell me about your striped shirt, right. Tanisha C. <laughs> it's, it's, as no good a question al- as the last one you just asked. No one's allowed to say <laughs> anything anymore. It's a little tense in here, I guess. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> tense tonight. <laughs> Sorry about that, C. We didn't mean for you to get screamed Sometimes at. Sometimes when Randy stops by, it becomes a tense night. Anyways, I like to, you know, I like your shirt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, but you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be looking at her beautiful face, her body, the whole nine yards. I started with the face, and then I got no, yelled at for not looking at the rack. No, you, you want, yeah, you've, you've, you've Started asking about her hairstyle. Like, I it came off really good. Not to be offensive, it came off like you wanted to style it. I want to style her hair. I would have said that. You came off irregular.
But I, you know, note how um, I got snap I got snapped at for not making like a quick comment about her clothes. No, the snap was that you keep talking and you don't shut up. And this is not the Randy show. It's Ron and Fez show. All right, here's Steve. Steve, exactly. you're on Ron and Fez. Hello, hey Steve. What's going on? Yeah. What can um, we do for you? You know, I I I have a like a theory about this. I think that this is all some sort of like plot or conspiracy against Al that you bring gay Randy in there. Randy. Oh, I'm sorry, regular, it's regular Randy. Randy. Um, you bring Randy in there, and you know that Al is going to get so psychopathically mad that he'll end up doing something really stupid and get himself fired. Right. I agree. Well, Al is... Why, put, why else? Why we, we had him on the phone last night with his, his uh, saying z zero and anything interesting to the show, adding nothing to the show. And then I even had a meeting today with Jeremy about, I don't want this guy Ooh. in here. And then Rory books him because that's uh, uh, well, I was gonna say, you great know, it booking. Looks, it looks like Rory is, is at the right. center of this conspiracy. It's a gaslight. It's a gaslight. It'll yeah. drive you crazy. You're being gaslit. This is his way of trying to pretend to take over, book a, a great guest like Randy. And I even admitted that to you, that yeah. I did well, book Well, it's great. It's, been, it's been great so and it's far. it's working. Yeah, it's going well. Good job. Yeah, it's going real well. Al, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't know that you didn't want him in. Please, oh, I yeah. never know when you're doing a bit. How would you not know I don't want a guy in? Because well, you say, do a bit. Did you everyone. say anything? I don't want the guy in ever again. It's not a bit. Well, you know. What do you mean? There we go. That's yeah. what I mean. No, you said you don't want gay. You don't Seriously. want gay Randy. No, I don't want, you, you are gay Randy. What? Everything you are is the gay guy, and you admitted that. No, he's just regular Randy. No, you're the gay Randy. Al, you're the one we bringing up it. the gay stuff. Hey, is, is Dumpy still on vacation, or is any yeah, chance he's, to get him back in there? Yeah, he's in Australia. He's the Dumpy down under. And I got a, I got a postcard from him. He's doing great. He's yeah? riding big waves. What do you mean? Nice. Uh, That's what I thanks for the call. <laughs> And why are you having meetings with Jeremy about regular Randy? Do you come from an under? Ah, dumpy. He was cute. He used to freak out every once in a while. Oh, yeah. I noticed this, Fuzzy. A lot of times our producers will just flip out. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why either. But they end up in, in straight jackets constantly. Yeah. Straight jackets? Oh. <laughs> I just said straight jackets. <laughs> yeah, and it was stupid and inappropriate and it wasn't funny. It's what they put so a shut up. It's what they put a crazy person yes, in. Yes, and it's not funny. And a it adds nothing. A straight so jacket. So shut up. It's what they put a crazy shut person up. in. You know how annoying you are on the radio? You suck so bad on the air. It's not funny. You add nothing. It is boring to death. So shut you do New York a favor. This station a favor. Just shut up. Get out. Ron and Fez, what do they put a crazy person in? Yes. Straight Jack. Well, Straight that, Jack. What does that, that even true. mean? Whoa. Whoa. All right, Al. What did he just throw? What did he just throw across the room? He threw a paper stand that's made out of plexiglass and it cracked in half. He broke the plexiglass. Oh, jeez. Oh, look at this, Ronnie. Broke it right in half. It's pretty thick, too. Look at that. Is this a bit he's doing? I don't know, but, you know, when he's meeting with Jeremy... Yeah. I hope he brings up the fact that he's destroying Jeremy's equipment and studio. Oh, and this is where Opie always puts all his papers. Right. That's yeah. where Opie, you know, puts commercial copy and whatever else he needs. I, I bring Al back in. I want to show him what he did. This is... Can you Why did you say straight jacket? You know he hates that. <laughs> what? It's in the dictionary. It's like playing three blind mice around Curly Howard. You don't know what's going to set him off. And now this is a piece of studio equipment that is shattered. He ran down to the office. We're getting him right now. Okay. Tell him we need him to see this because, uh... Yeah. Go to the cry room and let uh, him know... He's not crying. He's just angry. Is he coming back? And let him know what he did. So he can see this. But I'm telling you right now, the guy does not like straight jackets. I guess not. You think he was in one at one point? And now it just freaks him out just hearing the words? Do you think he'll hold on long enough for the fight? <laughs> I, I can't possibly see it. I can't see him hanging out another minute. Should we come up with a synonym or code word? No, no code straight words. jacket. I, I, I thought that's the only word you would use. What about jacket with the sleeves in the back? I, I, Maybe it's the words jacket. I didn't know. That he hates. It wasn't straight, it was jacket. He hates these cans. 
<laughs> Billy's trying to talk to him. I'm going to see if I get him on the phone at least. All right, put him on the phone. Where's he at? In our office? Mm. Yeah, he's in your office. With Billy? Yeah, Billy's trying to... I hope there's not a puppy in there or anything. <laughs> I know. Oh. It'll end up like this. Oh, come on, pal. you got to come out of there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If I was on a ledge, that's who I'd want talking to me, Billy Staples. Look at me. Nothing ever goes right in my life. Should Man, I, should I stay or should I go? Uh, should I stay or should I go? <laughs> I'd stay. Well, maybe if, if I was we, plexiglass, if you're made out of plexiglass, I'd think leave. about it though. Have I really said anything? No, you really keyboard? haven't done anything. But other I, than the that cover story on the Daily News today, yeah. But even that, well, that was more of a guy who cuts people up than a gay guy. Billy just came back. He said he's done for the night. He's not answering the phone. I've been trying to call him a couple of times, and he just he said he, he refuses to come down. He said he is done for the night. All right, Tom. What if we send Randy out because we want to talk to him? Okay. If Randy's out of the studio, will he come down? My gosh. Oh, Ronnie? Yeah. Here's the nice part. Since Al's in the cry room, yeah. Sweaty News Update has to run up and down the hallway. <laughs> sweaty News Update. <laughs> sweaty News is charging up and down the hallway. Ah, ah. And having to go through two lobbies. Oh, gee, fellas, I'm ready to step in and produce if you need me. Oh, that was insane today. Tenacious C is in here with us, too, along with regular Randy. Tenacious, <laughs> Billy said that who, no matter who loses, Rory or Al, in the loser leave the show match, yeah. that uh, he's willing to step in and try to learn what either one of those guys do. <laughs> I know that they sit in front of a computer sometimes. <laughs> he actually says to us, I know Al sits across from me, Rory sits next to me, but I never yeah. realize what they do. We got Billy on the phone who's with <laughs> Al right now, so. Okay. Sweaty news. <laughs> Here we're getting a sweaty news update. Billy. Yeah, I'm in the office with Al. Um, he will come back down to the studio if Randy leaves and promises not not to come back again. All right, put him on with us. Hold on. All right, because I'm dying to talk to Al, but I hate sending Randy. Hello. Hi, Al. Al. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Oh, it's what's the point? We're just worried about you. Yeah. Well, then get him the hell out of there. What is, is, is so? It's Randy that got you upset. Do you think? Yes. Or is it Tenacious C? Because she came no. in right it's around. It's Randy, and it's ten after nine, and there's no way I'm sitting, standing there till eleven doing this, because uh, it's it's uh, it is so he is so boring. brutal. Boring. Yes. All right, hold on. Here's somebody that wants to talk to you. It's the Horde King. Oh, great. Horde King. Hey, Al. How you doing? Hi, guys. Oh, Hi, super. C. Hello, Your Andy, Majesty. Regular Andy. How's it going, Horde King? Uh, uh, you got some major anger cause... issues. You know, it's like every single time. Yeah, well, maybe little... if, someone, you know, if you have a job and someone comes to your job and annoys you every day with okay, phone let's, calls let's, let's... and now he's at your work being friggin' okay, annoying, let, what are you going to do? Now, what I'll do you do? Take it easy for one second. Just listen to me. Oh. Even if you don't agree, maybe right. there's a different perspective that can... Shed some light on why people are so troubled by what you're doing. Because obviously you're not seeing it yourself. I see it. I'm but saying, why would they bring him in tonight if they know this is what happens? They well, got what they, they got their, what they all wanted to have, do. Drive me crazy. Have, they did it. Great. We have a dynamic going on here, a, a, like a drama of the contradiction between your stated beliefs, which are that uh, you, you don't care for Randy, you don't like Randy, He's beneath your notice. He's, uh, you don't care about how he feels. And your actual stated actions, which are to freak out whenever he comes in and says something. Yeah, because you're, in, you're cornered in this you. tiny studio with this guy who's got nothing. And over and over again, they know he has nothing interesting to say or do. Mm -hmm. Yet everyone brings him in because it'll be hilarious when Al freaks out. Well, now I freaked out. And now, now, now what? This is it. I guess, uh, Randy, you've why done does, your job. Why do you Go think he freaks home. you out so much, Al? What? Why do you think he freaks you out so much? Because it's it's just it's the most monotonous thing I could ever imagine. Well, the monotony is repeated every time you say it's a monotonous thing. Well, then you let's not do the thing, thing that was the chicken before the egg. It's the same goddamn thing. 
it wouldn't be me saying it's monotonous if the guy wasn't in every every or calling or being in constantly. Listen, every every uh, Sunday across the nation, people go to church and hear a prayer, say prayers, and they don't say, "Gosh, this is really monotonous." Well, have them pray for me that Randy time. doesn't show up anymore. It's just very Can hard we? to reconcile Dear what Jesus. you're saying with how you're acting. Well, here's the thing. I work for the show. He doesn't need to be here. He, if, uh, I guarantee you, listeners are like, Jesus Christ, I can't believe Randy's in again tonight. He's no, going to bore us. why would you this? This might be your opinion, but why... No, would it's, believe me, it's, it's the people's opinion. No one that's called. You can speak for your own opinion. Right. But you can't well, that's my opinion. Someone. I'm the producer, too, so I don't want him in there. I thought Let's get him out. Was. I'll come down there if we can throw him out right now. Why does it matter to you? Uh, because it's the show I produce, and I don't want him in there. So you feel threatened by him? No, I feel bored to death by him. Why would I be threatened by the guy? Well, if you're reacting in such a way that you're... Threatened by what? What part am I threatened by? Well, that's up to you to Uh, tell me. Horking, what kind of different threats could Randy represent? No threat. Well, it could be a threat against the sexuality. But no, there's no, no, there's no, no, everyone can get over the gay no, thing. I'm not gay. Hold gay on. Straight. Who cares? Some people are gay, some people are straight, some people are bi. It's not relevant. We, we don't care. I think we lost Al Horking. I think he hung up. Unfortunately, Horking. he's the one who needs to hear it the most. Horking, let me ask you this. So this might have a, a, a gay thing attached to it, Hort King? It's conceivable, although yeah. I, I don't think that Al is gay. No. Um... But uh, it may be masking a curious factor or sure. or an interest. But how is, um, how is Randy but, but here? But the fact that he may have this feeling and not know what it is may f- make him feel very threatened. And when Randy's around, he feels that feeling and can't identify it. Well, it's a it's possibility. A it's, it's clear that, that Randy really hits buttons with Al. Well, and it's just very, very bizarre that on the one hand, he always talks about how meaningless what Randy says is. And uh, then reacts a total different way by freaking out. I know, right. then he gives it a lot of meaning. Correct. Yeah, he says it's boring, and but then he always time, does something exciting. Every time he talks about, um, Randy says this and he's boring, monotonous, blah, 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 blah. He's giving validity to everything that Randy's saying. Hort King, what should Jeremy Coleman do about an employee that is literally destroying things in his studio? This, you know, I know this is plexiglass, this thing ain't cheap. Well, not just based on this issue alone, but from many shows, there seems to be a pattern where Al gets ticked off and he'll punch a wall or he'll throw something. He kicked right. a chair last night. He's broken a foosball table. Yeah. I, I, it's, uh, Could he have an anger it seems problem? seems like he might be a good candidate for an anger management course. What would he do with that? What would they teach him? Yeah, what happens in those things? Well... Basically, like the name says, they try to teach you to manage your anger, to try to get a hold on the, on what it is that's ticking you off. All right, but if you if you are so angry that you want to physically break something, what do they teach you to do instead? One of those pillow things, where you well, have there the are those squishy things. balls, there's, there's yeah. distractions, there's counting to ten, you know, like like you did, or maybe were told to do when you were a little kid. Um, uh, any manners of of uh, different types of of things, whatever works for the individual. But, uh, right. but as it is now, it's 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 inherently unstable. I mean, you can't have yeah. a guy who's going around uh, throwing things, hitting things. That's for sure. It's it's going to eventually lead to harm. Well, of you know, Tenacia C was in here, and it broke my else. heart if she got hit with this thing when it went flying. Just I almost started giving her mouth to mouth. Just imagine if he had hit Billy. Uh, you know, the right, his, management would already yeah, be Billy would still find a way to sue the Long Island Railroad I, for Roy, it. Roy, what's going on down there? Uh, Billy just came back after uh, Al slammed down the phone. He says, I'm leaving right now. Is he gone? Yeah. Al has left the building? Yeah. I'm going to go down and check, but Billy said he was walking out the Why door. Why didn't Billy stop him? He, oh, uh, he, uh, I don't know. He tried to, but. Right, hold on. We got, who do we got on the other line? Just tell him to just take your thumb off it. Yeah. I right, hear somebody that might be able to help. Uh, hi, Stephen Baldwin. Yeah, what, what the hell is going on? Did you hear this, Stephen Baldwin? What happened in here? What the hell? I'll come down there. I'll get him to finish his arms off and start beating the crap out of everybody with it. I right, thought you were getting Steven. the start treatment from him, but he treats everyone like this. Yeah. Well, 
Steven? Steven, you there? Yeah, what, what, who, who treats everyone like what, Al? Yeah, Al, yeah. he gets a little angry. Al, Al treats everyone bad, whether they're movie stars or not. Uh, can't we say don't, that. Steven, I really appreciate a movie star coming down and, and beating up somebody for me, but I think maybe what Al just needs is this anger management course. Yeah, and they quit throwing stuff. You know what, Ronnie, I got to isolate that, because I think that is the very first time in, in the show history that a movie star has... Uh, actually said that they'll come down and beat someone up for you. Yeah, that's so well, nice. Yeah, yeah. They're in the Hall of Fame or something. Ronnie, Ronnie, who is yeah. that? That sounds like David Blaine. Who is that? <laughs> that's David Blaine himself. <laughs> yeah, that's David Blaine, the escape artist. All right, how much did you hear, Stephen? Did you just turn in or? No, I've been listening for like 10, 15 minutes. He saw, what is he, had a pay phone crying? Well, yeah, he left the studio. He flipped out here. He broke something and ran down the hall. And uh, now he seems to have disappeared on us. Well, yeah. listen, I'm telling you, it's like I said yesterday. Yeah. He's gay. Yeah. <laughs> That's not helping, Stephen. <laughs> Rory Hamptons, no, what's the no, update? No, yeah. um, it's obvious. I mean, you know, look, he's, now he's throwing like little hissy fits, tantrums, break. You know, gay people can be some of the most violent people in the world. Yeah, I know. I saw. I read the paper today. <laughs> Al yeah, said he's going to sit tight for a little bit. Yeah. Violence, but he says if anyone, if anyone, uh, if he comes down here, he's going to hit... Randy, with anything he's got in his hands. Where right, is he sitting tight? You, let me he's sitting you now, in the office right, right, now, right now. Yeah. Right now, he's in front of like a mirror, putting on the lipstick with like his mascara running. I do me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which phone that is. What the hell happened there? I have no idea. We got to turn down in here. All right, hold on, Steve. Is that your phone? Uh, oh no. Yeah. I guess my other line. Hold on. Yeah, that's his other line. <laughs> that's when Alec calls. You got really. <laughs> Alec calls, the fog horn goes off. You got really loud call waiting, Stephen. All right, let me just check back with Horde King. Horde yeah. King. Hey, Horde King. Yeah. Do you think it's, uh, since he's threatening Randy, do you think it's best that we send Randy home? Well, it depends on how you want to handle the situation. I, mean, I don't know. On the one hand, it could be creating a negative. Uh, um, oh gosh, I forgot a word I'm looking for. But it's like a negative thing. A um, usually you know, like a swear first, word. A first case, a case of first impression. Yeah. Um, you don't want to set a precedent. That was the word. Right. So that um, way we'd always be really given into the temper tantrum. behavior that you want to be rewarding. I see. That's good. All right. I understand. On the other hand, I think it's it would be very very valuable for Al to understand that this is not a confrontational issue. That he's making a confrontational. Well, Randy's Horde King... not sitting there attacking him and saying anything terrible about him. That right. He's a terrible person. He said, okay, sometimes he says you're gay, you're this, you're that. Big deal. Could some of this have been if, based if in the fact... he's not fight? gay, so yeah. what? Why should could... he be bothered by I it? I know. Some people gay, start so rumors what? about me. I could... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Baldwin. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Horde King. Sounds like right. Iris. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry, I'm a little out of the loop here. Yeah. Who's this guy? Is he a shrink? Yeah, he's like a shrink. He's a hurricane. Hey, bro, can I get your number off the, off the air? Because like, like we should talk. How many have you gone no, through? No, so really, you're very soothing. I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, but how many have you gone through so far, Stephen? How many shrinks? Just one. Oh, okay. Perfect. That's not bad. All right, now, uh, Hort King, would this help if Stephen Baldwin came in and beat him up? No, I don't think that. Would. All right, it might I, help you know, Stephen. I mean, we had the offer there. Yeah, we're help, willing to do uh, what it Stephen takes. Get some of that aggression, but I don't think it would help out. I, I just don't like anybody playing with my boys around and. Oh, we're fine. I mean, you thank know. you, Stephen. Now I'm. Wondering... I almost got hit with some plexiglass. Though. Ford King, do you think any of this is kind of any of this anger is aimed towards us since we let him make out? With you Randy know what? that time? In his conscious mind, it may not be, but at least on an unconscious level, I'm sure it is. Thank you. I'm thinking that could be the link. It's all subconscious. Though. You think that's the smoking gun here? Yes. Wait a minute. What do you mean unconscious, not subconscious? What's the difference? Well, subconscious is more of a lay term. The ah. proper term is the unconscious mind. A lay term. <laughs> a what term? Lay. Lay term. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I know we like them. I'm just afraid that Al <laughs> and Randy are going to end up like these British guys. <laughs> the British butcher who this chopped up his lover and left him in a pan cooking with kippers. Where's Randy right now? I have a peep out of me. Oh, he's right here. He's being a little nervous. He got a, a big thing busted over top of his head right near him. It didn't hit his head. But a big, plexi yeah, a big plexiglass thing. Al went crazy and started breaking it on the wall. 
Did he hit him in the head? No, it didn't hit his head. It was near his head. Right. He got It was thrown towards his head. I had, to but, sign a, I had to sign a release for him before I came in that I wouldn't sue WNEW if but, like, I got hurt tonight. You better do that in any S&M uh, acts yeah. that you're involved in, though. <laughs> Fortunately, Al has the throwing strength of a two-year-old, so it didn't go very far. Steven, wow. uh, Randy's also a bottom like you, Gordon Elton John's people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say we do a cage match in the studio. We'll build a little cage. And let him go at it. All right. Thanks a lot, my friend. we got to go to spots. Thanks, Word King. Okay, one more comment. Yeah. Just on the very off chance that Al was listening. Yeah. Al, this doesn't have to be confrontational. You're making it confrontational. People are not out to get you. They're not out to hurt you. But you're making it hard sometimes to be liked. So just sometimes have that consideration before you say something that you that might gain a lot of criticism. Ah, so, so we should pretty much leave Randy here and... See if he calms down, huh? Let me put it like this. Yeah. As a parent, Ron, you know that when you yeah. threaten a kid with something, the first time you don't go through with it, you right. put full power over the kid. But I'll tell you this. I've never seen any of my children act like that. <laughs> Your kids have never <laughs> thrown plexiglass. <laughs> <laughs> None of them. Not even the aborted ones. No. And they had a reason to be mad. <laughs> sure. Well, if you have a choice, you go with the producer to act that way. All right. Thanks a lot, Hort Thanks, Thanks, Stephen Baldwin. Thank you, Hort See you, hey, buddy. See you. There they go, the Horde King and his young prince, Stephen Baldwin. The royalty of Long Island, does he? <laughs> now, if Al goes to anger management, he's not going to be allowed to graduate until he can sit in a room and they show him a picture of gay Randy without him freaking out. I think he's got an anger problem here. I'm just starting to pick this up tonight. Roy, you better be careful in that boxing match. I know. What if you're made out of plexiglass? You'll be shattered right now. I, I'll have no problem with him. <laughs> wee, 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 boring. <laughs> yep. We'll be right back. It's Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez. 1027 WNEW. Lunatics in the office. Dark side of the owl. Again. Again. We're Ron and Fez. Tenacious C hanging with us tonight and regular Randy. <laughs> what did you guys do to Al? He's freaking out. <laughs> he was normal when I left. Sort of. When did you leave? 1983? <laughs> so you think it might have something to do with you? He sees you and he goes nuts. During the last break, Al Dukes had uh, another meltdown in here and smashed this big plexiglass board that... Uh, it sets up in here, and you can put copy on it and everything. Opie uses it every show. You know, the uh, the anger management might be a good idea. But here's the thing. When Horde King was trying to talk to him, he stopped listening. I know. There's no one more soothing than Horde King. Right. Horde King's going to understand your problem no matter what it is. And he's telling Horde King to shut up. Stephen Baldwin would like to use him. That's how highly recommended the Hort King comes. And I think he's had shrinks on both coasts. <laughs> and one in Europe. <laughs> Keeps a staff. 877-692-1027. You know, I knew that I was actually getting uh, too mad when he was foaming at the mouth. And it looked like just like a mad dog. He was. He was literally foaming. You know what it looked like? It looked like when you're a kid and you're blowing milk bubbles. <laughs> when you got your straw in your milk. That would get me a whack. Any kind of milk. I don't understand. Easy, Al. Easy, I'm talking. Down, Al. Bad boy. Bad doggy. I don't understand, like, what uh, my parents, maybe all adults are this. You can't put up with an effing milk bubble? Milk bubbles were great because they would just grow. They didn't pop immediately. Right. The milk was thick enough, especially vitamin D milk that we had then. Then you just get a mountain of bubbles coming out of your glass. But did your parents freak? Oh, yeah. I get clobbered. You take a shot for blowing a milk bubble. I used to get it for making ice cream soup. You know how you stir your ice cream up until it's a soup? I loved ice cream soup. I thought I was making an actual recipe. To this day, only way I can eat ice cream. To make ice cream soup? I got ice cream soup. It. <laughs> I got to mush it all up and get it nice and uh, creamy. It's the best. I thought I had an actual recipe I could sell as a child. And that's another thing. Freaked my parents out. 
All right, I'm having the same amount of ice cream. I'm not wasting it. Right. None is disappearing. And I'm getting a little arm working out here. Why are you freaking because I'm having my ice cream the way I enjoy? Right. You're not painting the walls with it. Right. You're eating all the ice cream soup. It's I, just in a soup farm. I was not going to miss out on a piece of my ice cream. And they would lose it. My God, stop playing with that. Oh, I always got, quit your messing. Quit your messing. What's that even mean? Oh my God, I'm messing up the entire dinner. I'm messing up the entire... I'm messing up food for everybody. What's wrong with a little food play? It's the best. Man, I'll tell you what. I used to, like, daydream and make that volcano with my mashed potatoes and gravy. Right. Yeah, like everyone does. And I would just hear, knock it off! Here's what and I would try... The whole volcano would erupt. Here's what I would try to do with my uh, mashed potato volcano. Uh, you know, have the gravy in. Right. And then I would just keep going around yeah. the outside, scooping around... So that I could have the thinnest bit before it actually came down. Yeah, you want to see how thin you can get the volcano before the gravy lava actually leaks through. Right. And also, they could put up with that as long as you don't make any kind of noise. And then I would get mad if somebody dumped it on without giving me the full volcano gravy effect. All right, yeah, because you, you get that hole in your volcano right. first, your potatoes, right, but before what I, you put your own gravy in. Right, I didn't want a speck of gravy on the outside of the potato... Right. You'd have to eat that part off if something's dripped over. Playing with your food was, <laughs> was rocking. Maybe it's because we didn't, you know, we didn't have video games then. We had to play with our food. <laughs> it's all Kids, we had. Kids, now they have video games. What do they need food games for? I never did that. All I did was um, suck the cream out of Oreos. You suck the cream first? Yeah. yeah. Unscrewing yeah. your Oreos? Somewhere. Yeah, I mean, that's how you would do it. That's how you'd suck the cream out. Somewhere right now, Al is screaming. <laughs> you had to turn it gay. <laughs> He's just furious. Absolutely furious. I used to like Twinkies, too, but... Same they're, thing? They're hard, to, they're hard to suck. Yeah. Because it's all... They're like, moisture. It's all right inside. And Hey, Stan. Stan, you're on around the fez. Hey, Stan. Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Uh, I, I can't believe it. Jumped right on. It's beautiful. You're forgetting about the most famous scene with mashed potatoes. It's close encounters of the third kind. This means something. Yeah, right. Now I actually do. When I look at mashed potatoes, I start to think that to this day. I would drive my mother insane. She'd go make mashed potatoes. I'd sit there and put them up in the volcano, and cut the top like the uh, you know like the uh, the mountain, and uh, start screaming. This means something. This means something. <laughs> Paint my face half red too. Brought chicken wire into the living room. You know, start to make a full size scale mountain. It was fun. I, I love you guys. All right, thanks. Card holder 6666. Cool, cool, cool. All right, see ya, buddy. God bless you. Thank you, Stan. You know, yeah. parents cannot give their children yeah. a food that's the consistency of Play Doh and not expect them to right. build with it. All right, we have a sweaty news update. Uh,. Billy has one that he wants to add to the food games. Oh, nice. To the food games topic. All right, get sweaty news in here. Sweaty news update. We're sweaty news. <laughs> sweaty news. What did you used to do with your food? What food did you like to play with? Oh, I always play with uh, mashed potatoes and vegetables. We'd mix them up and call them monkey mountains. Monkey Mountain? Yeah, you take your peas and your corn and mix it with the mashed potatoes, mix it all together, kind of, and it would be like a big Monkey Mountain right in the middle of your plate. I, why would I want to waste my potatoes with vegetables in there? <laughs> oh, this way, it, they just taste it so much better, so, you know, you didn't, if you didn't like oh, your the vegetable vegetables. part, you'd be yeah. able to get some potato flavor in I don't it? understand why it's called Monkey Mountain. I was wondering the same thing. Oh, what, you, I'm the only one, I guarantee you, everyone out there feels with Monkey Mountains. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very popular thing to do. <laughs> Dinner's ready, Billy. Don't they have a monkey mountain on 125th Street? All right. Hold on. You get this. White people are so scared of black people. You get Annie DeFranco. See, I have regular time. I wish you went back to gay stuff. <laughs> See, I picture Billy eating like the kid, the little brother in Christmas story, where mm. they took away his silverware. You want to eat like a piggy? <laughs> <laughs> and, said, and his little snout is just covered in mashed potatoes. <laughs> Show us how the piggies eat. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Jake. Jake, you're running fast. Yeah, hey, Jake. Buddy. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I used to uh, make words with my alphabet, and my parents would get so mad because they'd always be inappropriate words, like poop. Like I like with your alphabet funny. soup or your alphabet uh, uh, cereal? I was never really a big soup man, always a cereal for me. Yeah. You know, those, uh, to me, those letters were so short and fat, I could never figure them out anyway. <laughs> I know. You get them in milk, and they're just going to swell up. Hey, Dave. Dave, you're on Rana Fez. 
Hey, hey Dave. Up, fellas? Yeah. But I. I used to uh, line up peas on my butter knife and try to pour them into my mouth like the uh, cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Fred Blitzstone would always do that. My parents got so mad. Why would that make him furious? Here's a kid eating his vegetables. Right. Well, and you just don't like the way that he's having them all slide in like it's on a sliding board. Well, really, they'd fall all over the place and make a big mess. All right. Thanks, man. It's not yeah. good enough that he's eating his vegetables. He has to eat them a certain way. Here's uh, Jeff. Jeff, you're on Ron Fez. How are you, my man? Hey, Jeff. What's up, guys? Hey, buddy. What can we do for hey, you? Can I just say that Rita is a fat whore? That's all I have to say. Bye. Who? Something Anita? Juanita? I think it's Juanita down at the diner. I'm She's not crying. Sure. <laughs> right now, there's a woman crying. <laughs> <laughs> now, I used to do this. I love to do it. I'll still do it. Yeah. Put uh, bugle snacks yeah. on my fingers like they were long fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> like I had witch fingernails. Uh, and then I bite my nails, but they were really bugles. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> like you're a witch. You're playing your girl. That's nice, Fez. This comes as a shock. Manny, you're around a Fez. A boy hey, guys. Witch. Hi, Manny. You remember that uh, Matthew Broderick film where he um, almost starts a nuclear war? His dad is playing with his corn, rubbing butter all over it with bread. Oh, yeah. So uh, he war his, games? He used his breaded butter to... War games, right. All right, here's the thing that used to drive my dad crazy. I would just take the butter and roll it. I mean, I would take the corn and roll it through the stick of butter oh. rather than <laughs> peeling off so that my dad had to look over at the butter later when he was making toast. <laughs> and there was a big effing hot corn center there from where I just rolled it through. A nice corny long indent. Shall we play a game? All right, you've never done that with corn on the cob before, Fez? I've tried it. I never get away with it at my house. You'll get killed. You'll get killed. You, and it has to I, be... I was never allowed to butter my own corn because they knew I'd have, you know, a quart of butter all over the thing. Oh, I couldn't eat it without. That would uh, annoy, or if you made any kind of typewriter noise while you're eating your corn. <laughs> ting, ting, and then we'd go, cut it. Effing out. Typewriter corn. You know how, like, the cartoons eat fishes and, like, they stick the whole fish in their right. mouth and pull the skeleton out? Yeah. yeah. I used to do that with corn. What are you, Top Cat? So you would actually put the corn all the way. You're deep throating corn. All right, somewhere Al's Al is mad. Yeah. <laughs> Al is just furious. I, I mean, it's, it's not gay. It's just the way they ate corn as a kid. I know, but right now Al's looking for plexiglass to break. Here's uh, Melissa. Sweet Melissa, you're on Run a Fez. Sweet Hi, Melissa. I used to uh, take wait, this is not, the wait, this Hold is that, hold <laughs> that, sweet Melissa. You are not sweet Melissa. No. I am very sweet, but I'm not sweet Melissa. You're what not a getting liar. this music. What a liar. You are not getting the music. So All right, fake Mar Melissa, what do you want? Uh, <laughs> fake Melissa. Um, I used to take the Kraft macaroni and cheese uh, noodles and put them on each fork point. <laughs> on the prongs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. That's hysterical. They're getting four, by, four little elbow macaronis at a time. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, say Thank you, Melissa. Fake Melissa. Here's Nick. Nick, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Nick. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, C. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh. Oh. Everyone's got a crush on the C. Oh, you got to love her, man. I love Anyway, my, my big thing was uh, the butter thing. I used to take a stick of butter. Instead of... Uh, taking a knife and putting the butter on my toast, I would take the whole slab of butter and just rub it on there. It was just like one shot. And then my mother would come in and say, what the? What's this all over the butter? It's like, it's just some crumbs. I'm like, oh my, I don't know. That would drive my dad nuts if I did anything to the butter. Or here's another thing. And one time, he actually woke me up while I was sleeping. Really? you know, he would go to work earlier. He grabbed me out of bed to come down and look at the fact that I would use the same knife for peanut butter as I would for jelly. Oh. So he'd go to put some jelly on his toast, and there would be some peanut butter uh, left over in there. <laughs> he yanks me out of bed and made me look into a jar of jelly. <laughs> I don't know what other people eat. Not other people use two knives. Remember Goober Grape where they try to put them both in one yeah, jar? Yeah, that's insane. And, like, the peanut butter was, like, putty. It was, yeah, just, it was it retarded. Just it was ridiculous. It wasn't They color. used bad peanut butter, bad jelly. What it was kind a bad of, idea. What kind of hurry are you in that you have to have your peanut butter and jelly together? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have time. For both condiments, I need them in here together. And the, let's put the salt and pepper in the same thing. And the stripes never stayed separated. You just end up with a gray mess. Here's, uh... <laughs> blech. 
Here's Randy. You're on Running Fez with regular Randy and Running Fez. Yo, what's up, buddies? Tenacious C is here. Say hi to the C. I see. Hello. What did you do, Randy? Yeah, I used to take my animal crackers and have them fight. Like, I'll have the elephant animal cracker and I'd have the lion rip it apart before I ate it. Did you ever do that? With, you know, animal crackers to me were the, like the driest... Yeah, they were the worst. food, yeah. You have to they, dip them in chocolate or something. Yeah. Or fluff. To me, mm, they always fluff. seem like a baby snack. Like you would give a baby animal crackers like, when they're teething or something. <laughs> like those cookies that a baby eats for three hours and yeah. like it's like a sponge when you pull it out. I know. <laughs> or I guess if there's an asteroid headed towards Earth, you could play with them on a girl's stomach. I'm not sure. Uh, you could be going from the highlands all the way down to the elusive lowlands. <laughs> you want to play that, uh, C? Oh, with you? Animal cracker oh, Armageddon? Now she's talking dirty. <laughs> What an invitation. All right, uh, Metal says that the Subway does put salt and pepper in the same <laughs> container. Oh, Subway yeah, sandwiches. they do. I had no idea that. Yeah, they got a little handle on that thing, and they just shake it all over you. Is that right? sandwich. Yeah. Disgusting. 877 <laughs> All right, John says he used to carve baseball stadiums out of his Cocoa Krispies. Out of his Cocoa Krispies? I don't understand that one. <laughs> All right, when you ate candy corn, like on Halloween, do you ever just put it on your eye teeth? Yeah. And make, like, candy corn fangs? Yeah. <laughs> to go yeah. with your bugle witch nails? <laughs> you were just be quite a, the sight. You're just a big queen down there. I was going to say, you were quite the, you were quite the food-oriented <laughs> drag queen as a child. We couldn't afford costumes. I had to make them out of snacks I found around the house. All right, on the instant feedback, Kevin says that he used to put a piece of butter in his mouth and then eat the corn. <laughs> People love butter on their corn. They're right. going to get it any way they can. Here is, uh, let me go to Bobby. Bobby, you're going to run a fez. Hey, Bobby. Bobby. My girlfriend would like to say she used to put black olives on her fingertips and make it like she was E.T. <laughs> Ouch. Olive, ouch. That's hysterical. All right, here's another thing. Remember those big, thick pretzel sticks that you would pretend you had a cigar? Oh, yeah. Yep. And you would suck on the end of a big... I don't know. Does that pretzel have a different name than the rest of them? I just call it giant pretzel stick. They're, called, right. they're actually called rods. Rods. Pretzel rods? Yeah, it's a, it's a rod. It's a long pretzel rod. You got out right. punching a wall. I'm reading the uh, feedback. Scott says he used to dip his french fries in ketchup and say that they were cigarettes. <laughs> and they were on See, fire at the end. I only wish I knew that. <laughs> they were lit. Here's uh, Mark. <laughs> so stupid. Mark, here on Fez. Hey, Mark. What's up, gentlemen? How are you doing tonight? Hey, buddy. But I... But I... I used to take as many Pringles as I possibly could, like 20 Pringles, and try to shove them all in my mouth without breaking them all up. So you tried to keep, a, like, a, like perfect Pringles. Nice stack. And then bite them all at the same time? Yeah, and try to bite them all at the same time. That sounds delicious. Hey, one more thing. You know what? Totally white trash, but try macaroni and cheese with uh, syrup, dynamite. All Ooh. right, macaroni and cheese and syrup. Oh, syrup. Yeah. All good. That's it. Thank you, Mark. That with those awful. Pringles, you know, you could always take the two and make the duck bill. <laughs> you had fun with Pringles. <laughs> you enjoyed, did you put one on the end of your day, but then you had a condom on? No. I'm a potato chip condom on the end of your five-year-old day and walk around and saying, I don't want to get anybody pregnant. You could also make it look like Mike Tyson's lips. All right. You're going to get this one. White people are so scared of black people. You're better when you're gay. You're not yeah. racist. You're KKK Randy. Racist Randy. I was told not to be gay tonight. All right. Here's one. Yeah, did you used to do the orange slice in the mouth and pretend you were the godfather. Of course. Yeah. I still do that. Oh, we get in trouble for that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Again, you're going to make yourself sick, you're going to choke, you're messing. Here is some, uh, here's Dinah. Dinah, you're on the uh, air. How you doing there, Dinah? Hi, Dinah. Hi, this is Dina. How are you guys? Dina. Dina, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I love you guys. You know, I've never called into a radio station, but this is just really funny driving home. I had a girlfriend when I was a kid who used to eat her Cheerios one Cheerio at a time, and every morning that she did that, she gets smacked in the head by her mother because she was going to miss the bus. 
Just do something with a spoon, like one, literally one with a little bit of milk at a time. Just a little tiny. In case it was a honey, I shrunk the kids deal. <laughs> you had to check. There could be a kid floating in there like it's a life that preserver. That always freaked me out, man. <laughs> that th scene freaked me out, and I still can't think about it with Cheerios. Hey, this I is a good one you guys have to try even as adults. The macaroni and cheese everybody keeps talking about, I don't like, like that macaroni and cheese, but if you take the powdered cheese and put it into like a regular popcorn, like if you pop, you know, just microwave popcorn, it is so good. You get the best cheese popcorn. Anyway, that's it. Just wanted to share. All right. Thank right, see you. Bye, guys. And you get a box of elbow macaroni that's useless. Because you've taken the cheese powder away. No, you from make it. um you make a piece of art for the refrigerator with that. Oh God. Any kind of art that they should try to make us do in elementary school. <laughs> and then you you're stupid enough to bring that home to your mom like she's gonna be impressed. Yeah. Because with, all moms have macaroni hair, don't they? Beautiful elbow macaroni hair. You know, spraying it gold doesn't make it look any prettier, kid. <laughs> and wait, this is a true story too. I remember there was like a fat kid on my bus. And um, we all made these macaroni pictures, and by the time he got home, I swear half of it was eaten. Oh, that is so sick. It's really sad. Was his name Billy? <laughs> it may have been. He can't help Oops. it. He... He's like blue and macaroni. Ah. Ah. Jay, you're on my fez. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, Jay. Yeah. You use the uh, Twizzlers as a drinking straw and chocolate milk. That was fantastic. To use the yeah. Twizzlers as a straw, you, <laughs> you bite off each tip and you enjoy oh, yeah. yourself. Yep. Hey, I'm from promotions. Advice, guys. I that never fights rule. That was like, you know, really cheering the guys on. It was awesome. Thank you very I much. Know, I don't know what the deal is with, like, the fire department, but they weren't letting people in and stuff. But, yeah, uh, they had a problem. They thought we had too many people there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you heard me. I was in the background yelling, I don't think so, and everything like that. Yeah, you were. we were talking about you. You made the, the show, man. Yeah, we were yeah, talking no about problem. the guy who yelled, cool. I don't think so. All right, yeah. Talked about now it all the way home. That was Jay. That was Jay. The guy that we were talking about. I, we're still laughing about that, even when our car passed Al's ambulance. Yeah. I remember <laughs> we were just knee slapping. About it. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Here's uh oh here's our buddy the uh, rooster. Oh cool. Hey rooster, how are you? Yeah. What's up guys? Here come the rooster. The yeah. best theme music. Yeah, he's got great theme music. Of any caller, go ahead, rooster. Oh guys, I, I you know I got on this topic and I was thinking back when I was a little kid. I'm still ashamed of it to this day. When I used to eat pretzel logs. I used to act like I was like Godzilla or something and just like <laughs> ripping out trees and eating trees. I still do that with broccoli. I used to do the sound effect with it. I'd just be like, Aah! And that's the problem. They like the fact that you're eating, but any sound effects at all and you're in big trouble. <laughs> that's when the fun stops, mister. Right. That's when it's all over for you. All right, guys. All right, say it. All right, there he goes, Rooster. The human sawmill eating pretzel logs. Did you ever eat too much, um, did you ever swallow too much, um, pixie sugar out of a pixie straw and think you were going to die? I used to snort it. No. I love that stuff. <laughs> and you would cough out a big, colorful cloud. Be like, Bleh. I just added that to everything like it was salt. Like it was a condiment. Just sprinkle the pixie sugar on everything. <laughs> Here is, uh, Dave. Dave, you're on running Fez. Hey, Dave. Uh, yeah. But I... Hey, what about the, um, what about the fluffer nutters? Do you guys remember the song from the commercial and stuff? Fluffernutter was, uh, they tried to really push it hard to be with peanut butter. It was really like a just yeah. melted marshmallow. Yeah, marshmallow yeah, cream. Because it, it was the old song. Do you remember the song from no, the commercial? No, what was it? Well, we take fluff, 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 and lots of peanut butter. Marshmallow fluff to make a fluffernutter. You guys remember that? The, uh, no, I really don't remember that at all. Do you, Fez? I don't remember I don't that remember one. the song. Okay. Couple more. Couple right, hold on. More. Do you have the... it, Rory? What's right, that? Hold on. We think we have the song. All right. All right. Hold on. Here we go. This it, Rory? Oh, you need fluff, fluff, fluff. You make a fluff for nutter. Marshmallow fluff. And lots of peanut butter. First you spread, spread, spread. Your bread with peanut butter. And marshmallow fluff. And have a fluff for nutter. When you enjoy, joy, joy. Your fluff and peanut butter. You're glad you have enough for another fluff or another. I'm pretty sure they said when you enjoy your F and peanut butter in that thing. <laughs> you know, I, I here's a very bizarre memory of mine. I can remember my last fluff and nutter sandwich. Because I was about probably five years old, and then there was all this excitement in the neighborhood, and everybody was like running, you know, past my window. So I grabbed my sandwich and I go running outside with all the kids, 
and our neighbor's dog had been hit by a car and killed. Oh. And they had it. They just picked it off the street, and they were carrying it in like a bucket. Oh, gosh. And the mother uh, was all upset, and the family was all upset. And I'm looking inside, uh, and I'm eating my fluff and nutter sandwich at the same time. Going, And I remember I said something like, I think his head smashed or something, right? The mother flipped out <laughs> on the fact, and she was calling me like a devil or something, <laughs> saying, how can you eat? How can you eat that? And look at this dog, right? And I was trying to explain that you can still grieve and have a snack at the same time. The fact that I feel bad about the dog being killed doesn't. There's no reason for me to waste my lunch. You took a sandwich to a crime scene. God. Just staring in a bucket. I'm that dog enjoying a sandwich. That's you, the best. All right, let me point this out. In my family, you get up and leave the sandwich. It ain't there when you're coming back. This was my lunch time. I had to have it then. I had a brother who would swoop on it. It doesn't mean I want to miss the first dead dog I'm ever seeing. And you never had another? No. The whole <laughs> the whole thing was so traumatic, I should go lay down on Horde King's couch. Because, first of all, you know, I feel traumatized. Like, now it's my fault. Yeah, now they're putting the dog death on right. you because you're having your lunch. I'm five. Obviously, I didn't drive over your dog. I'm enjoying a peanut butter and fluff another sandwich. This woman's standing there crying. She looks over. There's a kid with a sandwich bent over a bucket. That's great. And, you know, if you love this dog so much, why are you carrying it around in a bucket? Blood's still in there. Oh, she just needed someone to lash out at. And you were the closest person with a sandwich. Yes, a five-year-old. Thank you very much. <sighs> Was she Asian? No. Where does that come from? I don't know. It's better when you're gay. Al's wrong. <laughs> just look. 877-692-1027. Tim, you're on run a fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, yeah. Tim. Well, you guys remember this. Before they wrapped the ring dings, they used to wrap the ring dings in aluminum foil. Sure, right. And then what I used to do is pull the edges off very slightly, make four little legs out of it, make a spaceship. Ring ding spaceship. There you so, go. And then, then you eat all of the chocolate off without eating any of the inside. You know, I did that with a lot of different foods where I'd actually try to, you know, eat the outside first. Work your way in. Here's John. John, you're on Run and Fez. I still try it with jelly donuts. People are nuts with food, I guess, though, huh, Fez? There's a lot of fun you can have with some food. John, you're on the air. Hey, hey John. Hey, buddy. What's going on, guys? Yeah. Hey, 21452 here. Hoo, hoo, hoo There's your hoo-ah. What hey, you got? We, hey, I used to eat my M&Ms. I put them all in color codes, <laughs> and I would make sure they all beat the crap out of the brown ones just for, uh, for love's sake. You know what I mean? Aw. White love's people sake. are so scared of black people. <laughs> All right, say it. Here is uh, Jimmy. Jimmy Armanifes. Hi, Jimmy. Hey, what are you doing, guys? Yeah. We used to take the uh, fruit slices, uh, apples, oranges, and we used to line them up and have a war, like the battleship. <laughs> and they would <laughs> knock them over with your feet. <laughs> with different fruit table. slices. All right, say it, man. <laughs> That's so funny. People are nuts. Well, I know with any sort of pocket candy or whatever, I would always pretend that was my medicine. I think everyone oh, yeah. has that. Oh, yeah, I always says my bills. medicine. And then if somebody in your family tried to get it, I'm sorry. I'm, I need no. this. <laughs> you cannot have any of these red hots. The doctor says <laughs> I need these. I could die. <laughs> I could die without this medicine. Now I need more medicine. You've upset me. Do you remember Crackle? Crackle yeah. was that like, like liquid a, chocolate that you would put on ice cream and it would make a shell. Oh, yeah. It was uh, the most amazing invention. A hofty. You would get from Mr. Softy. It would be hard on the outside of a soft thing. Hmm. Hofty. Hard Hoft. shell, soft ice cream. <laughs> hofty. Ah! That's a hofty. Even though the man's softy. Even though when you go up to Mr. Softy and say, I like a hofty, he's going, What? <laughs> then you would explain it. Is there any ice cream better than Mr. Like, the, there's no more thrilling thing than a Mr. Softy truck driving through your neighborhood when you're a kid. Oh, that's exciting. I'd get off my deathbed if I heard that song. <laughs> I'd come running out. We had a guy who'd make us chase him. 
Oh, yeah, some of the <laughs> sons of bitches make you, they go all the way down so they can get to the intersection. They hear you. Right. I look like rerun ch chasing the truck. Could you imagine <laughs> what a nightmare, though, that you just stand there, a bunch of, front, bunch of kids holding change, looking at the side of the truck? <laughs> the truck used to come around to me, but, like, there'd be nothing like chocolate left, and they'd only have, like, bomb pops. Oh, all right, that like, would I have a bomb pop. You're at the end of the uh, run. The end of the cul-de-sac. That was so depressing. Like, I'd only get, like, those red, white, and blue pops. So you never got a nice hofty? <laughs> I never got one of the hard ones with the soft inside. All, all right. right. Now look what you're doing. And I'm a kid. I'm talking about ice cream. I hope all the plexiglass is out of the office. <laughs> all right. We got a game show to do. A good thing Tenacious C is here because I hate to host them anymore, Fez. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we got to do some uh, commercials. That's right. We'll come back and we'll give away a pair of tickets to the Jerry Red Wilson Foundation benefit on June 11th. Are you? At, right, hold on. You're off, Randy? You taking off, buddy? I, I don't think I have a choice. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have a choice. You can sure. always stay. Well, should I stay or should I go? It's up to you. All right, uh, so what is that? I'm sorry, Fez. It's part of the Toyota Comedy Festival. It's the Jerry Red Wilson Foundation benefit on June 11th. Comics include Dave Attal, Louis Black, Jim Brewer, Kevin Meany, Colin Quinn, John Stewart, many, many more. Jesus, what a good show. Uh, I know. And w if you win that, you also qualify for tomorrow's grand prize drawing, front row seats to a different show each night of the Toyota Comedy Festival. All right. We'll come back. We'll play Casting Call, where... Uh Tenacious C will pick one of her favorite movies. Give us all the people in the movie, and uh, we will see if we can guess the movie. Straight Randy, thanks for being in here tonight, buddy. You did a good yeah. job. Thank you, regular Randy. I think it worked as regular Randy. Yeah. I think it worked out. It was racist You were kind of Randy. Yeah, yeah, yeah racist, racist Randy, <laughs> but still, you shook it up. Al can't accuse you of being boring and doing the same old material. All right, maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you, you know where to call me, Rory. Oh, yeah. All right, it's the Ron Fez Show. Ron, Ron, and Fez. Fez. 1027 WNEW. Who needs a casting call? Pick up your phones and let's play casting call. It is casting call. We're Ron and Fez. This will be hosted by the lovely Tenacious C. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Very so nice. Cute. I feel like the queen of game shows. You really are. <laughs> I don't care what that Vanna White says. She's a skank. You rule. Here's um, the way we play this game, Fezzy. Uh, she's going to give you the names from the cast. You have to give us the movie. That's how simple it is. And tonight you'll pick up a pair of tickets to the Jerry Red Wilson Foundation Benefit. That's June 11th, part of the Toyota Comedy Festival at Town Hall. Comics include Louis Black, Jim Brewer, Kevin Meany, Colin Quinn, John Stewart, many, many more. For tickets, call Ticketmaster 212-307-7171. All right, let's play. Here is, uh, well, let's just do the names first. Who do you got? Let's see. We have Jane Fonda, Alan Alda, Michael Keane, and Walter Matthau. All right, let's go over this again. Yeah, get the cast again. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. Alan Alda. Alan mm -hmm. Alda. Michael Keane. Michael Keane. And Walter Matthau. And Walter Matthau. Vietnam War demonstration? <laughs> ERA bill? Here is uh, Justin. Do you know the answer, Justin? No idea. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, man. buddy. Sorry. That means you get the sheepy trumpet. Mike, do you know the answer? Uh, either butterfly something or sorry. Sorry. Andrew, you're on Run of Fez. Andrew, what's your guess? Uh, the only Jay Fonda movie I know is Barbarella. <laughs> Patrick, you're on Run of Fez. Uh, yeah, was that a pooty tang? <laughs> Sorry. Dan, do you know this one? Is it uh, on Golden Pond? The sheepy trumpet getting a workout tonight, people. Carl, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, guys. Yeah. Bye. Uh, California Sweet. There's the wedding cowbell. Hang on, there Carl. You're going to the big ass prize closet. Pair of tickets to the Jerry Red Wilson Foundation benefit tomorrow. So many names. <laughs> At the Toyota Comedy Festival. And you're registered for tomorrow's grand prize drawing. Front row seats to a different show each night of the Toyota Comedy Festival. Five days, five shows, front row. All right. Uh, 
You know, now that Randy left, I wonder if Al will be stopping by. If Al Dukes would like to rejoin the show at any See point. See if he wants to just stop down and okay. talk to us. Thank you, Roy Hampton. Also, there's a beautiful young lady named, I believe, Christine. Christine is out in our green room. She is in our green room, and she has a connection to Al. She fixes his dad's car. Wow, this could be like a, this is your dad's life or something. <laughs> Hey, there he is. How you doing, Al? There's Al Dukes. Much better now. Working a half day today, huh, my friend? Not at all. What were you doing in the office uh, when you left? Uh, just trying to uh, relax. That's good. It's nice to have the kind of job where you can relax during the day. Just step away from it. Step away from it all. I'm so glad you're not an air traffic controller. Yeah, I just wanted to lay down for a little while. <laughs> or a fireman. Get some fire shut eye. A fireman just can't go walk away. This fire's too hot. This fire's boring. <laughs> same, fire, same kind of fire we had last night. <laughs> wee, 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 boring. <laughs> All right, Al. Uh, I kind of feel like we made some progress t tonight with you. I, I, uh, after talking with the Horde King, which, by the way, you rudely walked away. You hung up on the Horde it, King. It, it was nonsense. He was talking. He thinks, well, his thing is maybe you have some uh, issues with Randy, maybe there's certain feelings that you have or whatever. No. Feelings that you don't even recognize yet, that you can't identify. No. This, uh, there's nothing. It's it's uh, if he weren't so annoying. Who? That's it. Randy, he's annoying. That's it. That's that, It's that simple. It's a very simple thing. But he doesn't think it's that simple. He thinks it's, it's, Well, none of the, sh the people who think they're shrinks thinks things are simple. But you find other people annoying. I'm sure right. you find Billy, Billy Staples. <laughs> Ronnie, I had the same <laughs> idea there. Billy Staples is annoying. Remember right. when Billy first started working here and you couldn't stand the noises that he made? Yeah. And the snacks that he ate? And you used to ask uh, Fez and I, how much... This was always the funniest thing. He'd always be like, um, guys... How much do you think Billy adds to the show? And would it be easy to get somebody else who just would do the same amount? Or you would also suggest, what if Billy just worked from home and emailed anything in? Because you were annoyed to no end with his crackling and crunching and belching and farting. And now Billy's your best friend. Yeah, I get along with Billy. So, how I, I mean, Billy annoys you, so why not the rage it was focus on a, at Billy? It was on a different, it's a different level of annoyance. It's a hatred annoyance with Randy because he, it's just a, it's just a repeat and the same thing over and over again. All right, now the fact that you broke something that was belongs to the company, belongs in the studio, mm -hmm. did that make you feel a little embarrassed? Well, it's not a good thing to do, but... Uh, and the fact that I think I might have plexiglass in my eye. Oh, jeez. I could blind him. I know. Well, that was an unfortunate part of the incident tonight. The smashed plexiglass. And what actually made you smash the plexiglass? It was nothing that was said. Was it just a bill? Just it's the uh, uh, looking at the clock and knowing this guy was just going to be two and a half hours of him. I wasn't going to be able to take it. And instead of punching him in the face, I now he signed off on that. He did not sign off on the broken plexiglass. Yeah. Yeah. Here's. This paper that you wrote up, and it, as an addendum, Ronnie, there is a possibility that by coming into the studio tonight, you might get punched by Al Dukes, <laughs> which is really written in a madman's handwriting too. If you look at that, Ron. Yeah, I don't think there's ever been another show that actually said you could be. There's a possibility the producer could hit you. I don't think this happens on Letterman. Does Gelman ever take a swing at it? Marie Osmond no. or anyone that no. stops by Regis? You know, not even those shows like uh, where they have like uh, kid rapers and stuff on, like Larry King. Oh, right. Does Larry feel the need or his producer just to come running out and smack the guy? Yeah, Montel doesn't really land the cocoa butt. All right, let's bring in your friend. You brought a friend from home. You said you felt a little more comfortable around. Well, I never actually I never met her, but she said that she uh works with my or she works on my dad's car or something. So she's uh riding shotgun for you tonight. Wow. Well introduce her to everybody. And uh, this she works. is uh is it Christy or Christine? Christine. 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 This is Christine. She works at some Hyundai dealership. 
Did you want to plug it, Christine? Or? Courtesy or something? Is that it? Sure, I'll plug it. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you work at? Uh, Global Auto Mall oh. in North Plainfield, New Jersey. Yeah. And you fix Al's dad's uh, car? Yes, I do. And his sister. Oh. Mm -hmm. You don't take yours there, Al? I don't he have a Honda. Bought a, well, yeah, he bought a Honda because oh. he was too proud. Let's not tell everyone what kind of car, Josh. <laughs> don't worry, I won't give him the license plate number. Thank you. <laughs> if you so, know it, you could. What's Al's family like? Embarrassed. What are they embarrassed about? So you let, you talk to Al's dad and his sister when they come in to get their car service? Yes, I do. And you ask them about the show and Al's role on it and everything? Um, what do they say? Well, they don't really want to talk about it. Really? My, like, no, my sister had, never wants to talk about it, not even with me. Is that two steps? No, that's uh, my the OCD sister. OCD sister? No, my lay sister. Uh, Why doesn't She doesn't like the show? Well, or? she gets a stomachache when she listens. Why? She gets nervous when there's a lot of... Uh, like you're breaking stuff? She gets a sour yeah. stomach. Like tonight, her stomach would just be yeah. wretched, yeah. right? With that's... you breaking company equipment. Yeah, and she doesn't know when that's going to happen, so. None of us do. That's the weird part. None of us know when you're going to call. We're now calling a Dukes. You're going to pull a Dukes on us. So, Christine, I'll play the part of you. You be Al's dad. Uh, he comes in, he gets his car serviced. Hey, I hear your son's on Ron and Fez. How's he doing there? What would his reply be? Oh, God, you listen to that show? <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> no, I'm sure it didn't go that way. That's what we get. A little something like that. My mom's a big listener, though. Yeah. Oh, is she? That. Yes, I did hear that from the father. You think she was uh, listening tonight? Yes. Oh, jeez. She turns it off sometimes if, it, if, it's, uh, if it's getting... Uh, too much and giving her a stomach ache also. Everyone's got sour stomachs in that yeah, the whole family. family. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got, we're waiting for Kelly Osborne's going to be singing on uh, MTV in a uh, little bit. We'll do a very quick uh, <laughs> simulcast for that big-ass <laughs> simulcast. Tonight it literally will be a big-ass simulcast Come as on. Kelly Osborne sings at the MTV Award. You just can't stand the fact that she's become the star in her own right and her talent is being recognized finally. I know she wants recognition for her accomplishments, yeah. not just Jack's. So it was a little uncomfortable with Al's dad, huh? Yeah, he's the greatest, though. Yeah? Yeah, yeah very very good, good guy. Good man, huh? Definitely a good man. See, Bolt? Uh, you think no. he's proud of Al, or? He's definitely embarrassed of Al. No, what that's... did he say to you when you brought up Al? Seems the wrong word to be used. He, well, he, he's worried about the image that he portrays, um, uh, you know, during the show. and uh, <laughs> What image yeah. is that? Well, I don't know. You got so many tracks on him. Why don't you play one? <laughs> uh, one oh. Of I go up to the guys I want to make out. What? Yeah, that's it. I go up to the guys I want to make out. So he said, dude, you think Al is gay? He said that? Yes. Al's father is now asking the person who services his car, do you think my son's gay based on what you've heard on the radio? Did they ever ask you about Randy, Al? No. Nothing. They never ask anything specific. There's never any specifics about this show. I have gay feelings. <laughs> I have to tell you, Tenacious C is gorgeous. Is yeah, Absolutely everyone has a crush hot. on her. Everybody I got a crush on her, and I'm straight. Really? Definitely. She's yeah, well, she's not. But uh, I'm glad that uh, you were able to deal with it. Oh, Are we uh, still looking, waiting for Kelly Osborne? And what is she doing? Is she doing Papa Don't Preach? Or I believe she is singing Papa Don't Preach. That's her big hit. I thought she was singing Papa Don't Reach for that last piece of ham. <laughs> Does he? What? You know how the Osbournes feel about that. <laughs> they love their pork. Yeah. So we're nice. waiting for the MTV Awards to come back on. You know, I mean, sometimes they'll actually throw their pork away for us. <laughs> At the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Al, is there anything you want to say to Randy tonight as a way of of maybe just stopping this thing and ending it? Yeah, uh, don't come up here anymore. And then every, there's no problems. What do you think of this anger management course? You're going to look into one of those? Yeah, the courses don't have Randy up here. Then there's no need for any course. Would you be willing to go... Sit down with Word King and maybe learn a little something. About no, it? I would sit down with a. Uh, he's not a professional, so there'd be no no reason to sit sit down and talk to him about it. The uh, <laughs> Al, I don't know. You were here, say. What do you think he was like? Al. Yeah. When he was at that point, did you ever think? And you almost got hit with plexiglass. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna happen. He was like scrambling for something to break. <laughs> Can I interject? Yeah, go ahead and Yeah, please, Christine. You're part of this round well, table. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry, Al. Uh, yeah. Your father did bring bring up your anger. 
Really? What, what did he say? Uh, what type of discussions are going on? What did he say? Believe me. What you know, did he I say? Mean, he did need repairs to his car, so right. what, he was there for a couple okay. hours. Al, did you damage his car through an yeah. anger? Not what at did all. He say, what did Not he say about all. Al's anger? Well, I, I said that I admired Al in the way he speaks on the air, and he's yeah. very calm, and he said, oh, no, he's not like that all the time, at all. Yeah. What did he say? Uh, he insinuated that he had a very, very serious anger problem. Well, as, a ch- uh, as, as a younger uh, as a younger person growing up, I had uh, some anger issues, but uh, they're all worked out. What a house of hell. We were here tonight. It's like Did a you tantrum. hear yourself screaming and breaking office equipment? But that's rare here. I mean, it's rare now. It used to be. I used to do that all the time. Break stuff. And be angry. Really? So you had the one sister who couldn't get up the stairs. No, it was, she doing was the, very young. Doing the Perina cat chow chow chow. You're standing young. around smashing stuff. Yeah, it breaks. So, you know, a lot of boys do that as they're growing up. But you're still doing it at age 32 tonight. I did. I've done it here, and before I worked here, it had been years. So it's uh, it's this so room. So you blame it on us. I think it's this room. And, and let's see. You okay, punched Randy up the uh, office. Well, look at this. You punched up uh, the studio and uh, Anthony's foosball table. Well, then this may have an anger place, probably. Maybe. So, I mean, and the fact that your dad's still talking about it all this time. Well, I he's trying to make small I talk, I wasn't talking sure. about it in the past tense. Yeah, yeah, just trying to make small talk, I'm sure. Sounds like you're on a holy tear in that house. Nah. <laughs> Do we got a long time worry about you Columbine and us one day? No, not at all. Start wearing a trench coat during the summer? No, uh, no problems. Hmm. Well, there's problems tonight. Yeah. What are you going to tell Jeremy about that plexiglass board? Uh, Another well, one of your emails? <laughs> I will uh, replace it since I broke it. That's what I'll tell him. I'll leave him a note. It seems to me like he's paid for a lot of things around here. Yeah, that's true, Christine. But, uh, yeah, see, but if if there's anything damaged, they do get it fixed. Do you, yeah, but do you write it off as no. a business expense? No, you can't write that off. How do you write that off? I think Pete Johnson put that together in 1950. I, I don't think it's replaceable. We were going to give it to him on his retirement. <laughs> right. We're going to dip it in gold. The uh, no, we'll just keep going until we find it. You think she's not going to sing for a while? Then they just gave Reese Witherspoon some uh, box of popcorn award. L- last commercial break, they went into the commercial break saying she's coming up next. But you know how they always tease it a little bit. They're so. going to wait to the end of the show because right. she's the biggest star in show business right now. She's the draw at this thing. Face some facts. And she is literally the biggest star <laughs> of MTV at this moment. Why are you going to be like that? What? I'm agreeing with you. Now, I got a lot of phone calls here that want to talk to you, but we can't take them because we uh, are in uh, real time right now. Right. We're not on the 24-second delay. Right. And I know your temper, and I know right. some of the things you That's say. That's true. And your dad and I and Horde King and even Randy are all a little worried about you. Your dad's so worried he's talking to it about uh, with his mechanic. Look, if it, you you look for anything to talk to people about when you're waiting in line. For I got news car. for you. I'm a father. I would you just never. Start chatting. I would never say a disparaging remark about my children in public. Yeah, I don't think it was disparaging. My son has an anger problem. I don't think maybe he's worried. Yes, that's for what me. we're talking about. We're all worried about you, Al. Everything's fine. Just keep Gay Randy out of here, and there's zero problems. Don't you think if is gay, gay Randy at your house is that why you're breaking up stuff no. there? No, I, I, I've not broken anything except... Uh, no, I've broken nothing at home since uh, I've been back up here. What was the last... Since you've been back up here? Yeah. From well, did, Florida. From, well, yeah. I, well, I know that, but oh, I mean... Oh, was he in Florida, Christine? Yes, he was. How <laughs> old were you when you left? I was uh, probably t- 24, 23. And you were still breaking stuff then? Uh, uh, possibly. I got better at looking for certain items. I, I used to just grab whatever and break it. Now I would be able to look or punch the wall and say, okay, if I punch the wall, I'm not going to really uh, break anything, but I'll get the aggression out by hitting the wall. As opposed Why do you to, let like, it build up that much? Yes. What do you think, Christine? Um, What's I, he, what do you there, and his dad there think? There is nothing to pull my wank away. Uh, He's <laughs> putting it closer to you. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Pulling it away. Go ahead, Christine. I don't think there's anything in this world to be so angry about yes. write it off and just chill you know I'm, we can't all have that simple life like that 
where nothing. Here's Kelly Osborne. All right, good. Ozzy just introduced her. Sharon's in the in the audience with her hands over her face. She's running down the stairs. That's never a good idea. She's great. Oh, there's her porky brother with a Instacam. Wait a minute, isn't that Madonna? No. You're telling me that's Kelly Osborne? That's Kelly Osborne, and you know it is. Rocking down, she goes, let go of that mic stand. You ever have, like, friends who make their kids perform for you like it's fantastic? And you have to sit there and go, oh, yeah, it's great. Now that picture behind her is the actual size of her head. <laughs> what does it say in the back of her coat there? Say something like, click, click this. Oh, wait a minute, that's... That's a USDA brand, never mind. They are doing their best to drown her out with the music. The back of her jacket says, when's dinner? I'm telling you right now, Fez, you can be jealous all you want. A star was born tonight. I think that's a whole galaxy. Oh, there she is. She's getting sexy, Ronnie. That's she sexy sure Kelly. is. That's our Kelly Osborne. It's like watching Velvet Goldmine. <laughs> now, is that hair a natural color? I'm sure it matches the carpet. It matches the hair on her ass. Bubbles? She's an effing rock star. Why do they have bubbles out there? She's the princess of darkness. <laughs> Did she just say, I'm eating my baby? Keeping my baby. I think she's singing, I'm eating my baby. Like that Austin Powers guy. Get in my belly. Don't stop loving me, Daddy. Ugh. <laughs> it's like an R. Kelly video. R. Kelly Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> I say a star is Osborne tonight. Get, get, get. Hey, get, get, get. She's fantastic, and Jack knows it. Jack? Oh, my gosh. Jack is finally happy with his sister. Tonight, they get along. Finally, he slept with a rock star. Sharon is thrilled. They're trying to get her off stage. All right, she claimed she had 102-degree fever. Oh, they're just piling on her. All right. Uh. Kelly Osborne. Making her singing debut at the MTV Movie Awards with Papa Don't Preach. There she goes. She's fantastic. <laughs> you could barely hear her the way they drowned her out with that band. What a huge, huge career she's got in front of her. And behind her. <laughs> See the size of that ass? It's a career, not rear. Oh. She put the rear at career. All right. There you go. A very tiny big-ass Simon guess. All right, Fezzi, uh, we do have a spy report in. Yeah. Spy report. Spy report. Stay calm, everybody, but Kelly Osborne has broke free from her change. Oh, no. And is swatting at the M. TV audience. Spy report. Spy report. Try to remain calm.
We'll be back tomorrow with more of Al's breakdown. Christine, so nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, too. And anything you hear from uh, Al's dad or sister. I'll Spy right report. In. Spy report. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Friday night. Freaking show tomorrow. Let's relax tomorrow. Let's have a party. All right? Are you coming and see? I have to work tomorrow. Oh, jeez. Forget about it. Don't you work here? <laughs> All right, then. Let's put uh, Al in a cage and keep poking him with sticks. All right. I'm in. We'll be back tomorrow, 7 o'clock, right after Opie and Anthony.